Birdie Boy Productions is super excited because the blue-eyed Mexican Shane Torres' first stand-up special is on YouTube right now. Check it out. It's on Shane Torres' channel and Burt Kreischer's channel, The Blue-Eyed Mexican. I hope you like it. We're so proud of it. There's a link in the description below. Check it out on YouTube now. I've been arrested for drunk driving, been arrested for vandalism, super sexy hot mama. Jesus, Leanne. <laughs> that was a disaster. We would have been awesome friends. I know, right? <laughs> we would have been totally. Yeah. Because uh, if it's on every wall, you start feeling I like, like this, too. Did you do this? That's soundproofing. Oh, is it? It looks yeah. good. Thank it, you. It kind of looks like, a, reminds me of like those old tin roofs you uh -huh. see. In, yeah. It looks really good. That's kind of what I liked about it. Yeah, yeah, it's all soundproofing just to help. I didn't want to, you know, Burt Studio is soundproofed all the walls. All the, that wood is soundproofing. I didn't want to do that here. I wanted my wallpaper. I love this wallpaper. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. you yeah. Got it, and you like it has, it needs to be like separate feeling for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I don't, nothing in my house looks this girly. I don't actually want my everyday life to be this girly. When your kids are younger, is it harder to keep things like uh, not looking like havoc hit them? Like I don't, I don't, I don't have kids. And I don't think I'll have kids. So, and I remember when I was a kid, like my mom just had three boys, so I just assume every house looks like that. Looks like three boys live yeah, there. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. You know what? Before I met Bert, I was a, a I would say immaculate housekeeper. And when Bert and I were dating, there was a moment where I had to come to Jesus. And just go. You've lived on the bus. Yeah. Uh, you have to be willing to live with that level of slob, right? It's it. It's like dirty organized on the bus. Like meaning like shit goes in a certain place, but it's not organized in that corner. Like right, right. This is where all the hats are going. Yeah. And, and there might be like fifty hats yeah. stacked up in a corner or something. It's chaotic. You know? Organized like, chaos. chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's just like, and that's gonna. Happy when you have seven people in a place that's like, Tiny. you know, like it's smaller than the top floor of this house, you know, like oh, totally. this is a studio. So, you know, it's tiny. And I couldn't imagine living with seven people in here, even, you know, like, no. and it's unnatural. Yeah. And I think it's much easier now that the like longer runs are, are not like there's breaks in the four days or whatever, you totally. know, like, yeah. Yeah. Living yeah. on the bus is. Are we rolling, rolling right now? Yeah, or are yeah. we? Yeah, okay. We are. I just want to be sure. I thought we were, but I want to Did be you sure. like living on the bus? Was it fun? Yes, I love it, but I, I'm definitely a person who like likes to be alone. Like I, I don't mind being social, but I definitely need to like, uh, like learn like ha, I have to be alone sometimes. Like, and I have to do, and that that's kind of like what's interesting about the bus. Like we used to do everything together yes. on the bus, you know, and and we still do a lot together. But like, you know. Bert's so busy, so he might have a call or something, and, like, Peter's got to be with him for that. And then if it's me or Dave or someone else, you know, like, like Dave might sleep. Like, I'm going to go get my hour in at least by myself, which is usually, like, so what, what I'm saying is we've all learned how to live with each other on the bus and satisfy each other's, like, needs. Like, we know after show we're all hanging out for at least a few hours. No one's going to sleep, you know, right. and nobody wants to then. You know, right, like, right. we're all... Like, we're all on high from the show. Yes. But, like, uh, it's like you were saying earlier, like, in the morning, like, you'll be up for four hours already. Mm -hmm. Like, and like, if I wake up, I don't want to talk to a fucking soul. Yeah. Like, good morning. How are you? My headphones are in. And I go, you know, like, I either, I go do whatever it is I need to do, like, clean myself, shout, like, or the bathroom, whatever. And I'm like, I need an hour of, yeah. like, not real engaged like civil and like I can't do it. It's too fucking much, man. Like yeah. I don't know, like every girlfriend I've ever had or lived with. Like they have left earlier than me in the morning. You know, yeah, yeah, like yeah. and I'm like, this is awesome. You that know, works, like, that works. And I kind of like I like the kiss goodbye in the morning too. Like I like being in bed and then they, they kiss me goodbye <laughs> and and then like I'm excited to see them. You know, yeah, like as opposed yeah. to be like, well, let's both rush out of the house at the same time. That yeah. shit's brutal. I used to be that way, and then when I had kids. I decided not, I not, I'm not saying that this is, would work for you, but yeah. for me, I was like, I can't be an asshole for an hour. My three year old doesn't understand that. Mm. So I got to be, I got to get past that because I was that way. My dad used to say, 
I was like waking up a bear. Like as oh, soon really? as, yeah, I woke up, I was like, Rah! nasty. It didn't want to be bothered. And then when I had kids, I was like, you just can't, I, I just couldn't do that because it's not fair to them yeah. for me to well, wait. That's like your responsibility. Yeah, to, yeah. It's, but I think it's like a lot shifts when you have kids. Yeah. Like, you know, Bert said, used to complain about this all the time. When we were first dating. I was a lot more adventurous in that. Like we went camping once, uh, out, out in Catalina and there's this big cliff that people would climb up and jump into the ocean and I was the first one. I was like, I'm jumping off that cliff. Let's go. And I got everybody to go. Jumped off the cliff in the ocean. When I had kids, I was like, yeah, I won't be doing that. Nope. And I'd been that adventuresome kind of risk taker my whole life. And when I had kids, I was like, nope. You know, if something happens to me on that cliff, Bert's raising these people and that's a bad plan. <laughs> Do you? Bad plan. Do you think it was motherhood that did it or uh -huh. getting older? No, like, I think it was motherhood. Yeah, okay. I was 33, almost 34 when I had Georgia. Yeah. So, so it is like, yeah, it's just, it's being a parent because you yeah. need to like, so you like, if you were say my age, like I'm 41, so I'm not like, you would still like do things like that, you think? Maybe I'd not, probably, as, not, not as, like, yeah. as, as extreme. Yeah. Because I still, I'm, I don't want to let any of that stuff go, uh -huh. you know? And I like, I like doing some of that stuff too. Uh-huh. And now I'm like, what keeps me from doing a lot of things is like, well, if you get injured, you're you're not gonna be able to work. Yeah, yeah, and totally. you like, yeah. So it's really more the consequence of it than uh -huh. like being afraid of it, which I guess is the same thing, but just uh, yeah, mine's you. the consequence of it too. Yeah. Oh, I totally jump off that rock, no problem, not afraid. Yeah, but but yeah, I go, oh, if I get hurt, it affects three people's lives big time. Whereas before it, it only affected mine. Yeah. Although of course it would affect my dad and whatever. Yeah, but, but like but like you don't think about that. The dependency people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Georgia and Isla would be fucked if yeah. they just had to rely on Bert be, Kreischer. There'd be so many like they'd just be living there'd on the be bus. Like, oh it would be it'd be interesting. I would I would yeah. say, like, I don't think they'd be fucked, but there'd be like, we really gotta find like the right fill fill in people for this, yeah. Yeah. Now that your your girls are a little older, is it easier for you to like rest in, or is your clock just kind of set? In My clock's kind of set, and I yeah. really kind of hate it. Yeah. In the you would love to sleep in. Oh, I'm a night owl. Yeah. Oh, you keep... dare me to stay up till one or two in the morning? Yeah, really. Yeah, even to this day, like I had to do something the other night. Well, last night I, I went to bed at three last night, and I was up at six um, because my clock woke me up at six. Now. After in the summer when we don't have school, when the girls don't get up there, because everybody in my house is a night owl, but I have to get uh, up. Like you guys are like during the summer, everybody's up late. Everybody's up late and everybody sleeps. I get up at like nine or 10, which doesn't sound that late, but compared to six, that's yeah, no, three that's hours a world later. Of difference. Yeah. No, that's, difference. A, that's like, yeah, no, that's a world of difference. Yeah. Like, so in the summer, I'm like up to one or two. And if you're I up at six, you're beating traffic. If you're up at nine, <laughs> you're like late. You know, like it's very. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's a, no, that's a huge difference. It's like a that. huge difference. Yeah. I'd much rather have that life up at nine. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah Cause I get yeah. so much done at night cause it's quieter and I seem to get really focused at night. Like, I can barrel through stuff at night that I can't barrel through in the daytime. I'm real scattered in the day. Where'd you grow up, Shane? Uh, Fort Worth, Texas. Southside. I've never been to Fort Worth. No? Have you no. You spent Have you spent much time in Texas? Not have a lot, no. No, where did you go when you were there? I've been to Austin and Dallas and Houston. Yeah, they're all... Very different. Yeah, Austin is like... Uh, they call it... Some people call it the People's Republic of Austin. <laughs> so oh, my God. It's Like, it's an old thing, but, like, it's so liberal and, like... Mm -hmm beautiful and great that it's uh and I, I mean i just came from there that it's it's not like the rest of texas in a lot of ways dallas i feel it, dallas is like fort worth's big brother it's just like the more mm. famous city but like i don't find that it, i enjoy it as a as a city like much like I, I, dallas or fort worth or both uh dallas i know i used to like love it it used to be the place in high school we would go to see bands and that kind of shit and now that's not really uh, how I feel, like when I go to Dallas, I'm like, oh, it's just kind of a big city. It's like the identity of it is that it is Dallas. Mm -hmm. Is how it feels to me. And then Fort Worth is like a nice town, like it's a decent sized town with plenty of like creative things to do. And so it's still too sleepy for me, but mm -hmm. I like it. I'm happy yeah. I grew. But it was way, way quieter when I was a kid. Like a lot of people right. have moved there and stuff. Like, 
and are moving there all the time just because it's like you can buy a house and you can afford and there's like plenty of cute things to do there you mm-hmm. know and then Houston is a, a mammoth city it's just a kind of big town but yeah like, Houston is big yeah Fort Worth it was a cool place to grow up I think um, but what, growing up did you always think I'm get, I'm leaving at some yes. point you did yeah yeah I was, from little yeah why well, I think my mom like traveled a lot for when she was young and stuff so I think maybe it was just kind of like a thing in my spirit that I was like but it was the same same kind of thing she had. She was like, I I was like, I'm leaving. Like I knew I was gonna go. And then for a number of years after high school, I just bartended and kind of stayed in the city. And it's so weird because I saw two guys I used to bartend with this weekend in Austin. They were they came to my show, but they were like really great guys and like I met awesome people. But I was like drinking a lot and I was twenty two or twenty three and I was like, I need to get the fuck out. Like I could there was a another bartender I worked with who that's what he did, like, was bartend and drink, and he was a good person, but kind of was, that was his, sta- that's where he was staying mm-hmm. for a while, and I was like, I need to get the fuck out of here, so yeah, I sold some things and saved some money and, like, left at the end of a summer, you know, and it was. I went to Portland. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I was going to, this is a funny story, I, my best friend I went to high school with, her, she left her dog in Fort Worth when she moved back to San Diego, and, uh, she left it with her mom, and she uh, she knew I was moving to San Francisco. I was like, oh, maybe I'll come out and see you on my way. And then she was like, will you bring my dog? And I was like, I guess. you know. <laughs> so I brought the dog, and uh, uh, it's weird to think this is like almost 20 years ago. Isn't now. that crazy? How long have you been out here? I got here in 97, and I moved to New York in 93. So I moved out of Georgia in 93. So you've been gone from Georgia for 30 years? Yeah. It's fucking wild to think about it, right? Isn't it? Still got my accent. Yeah. You know, and 30 you years al- <laughs> later, I've lived he- I've lived out of Georgia longer than I lived in it. Do you find yourself wondering what you did with half of the time that you've been, like, I like, I don't like, I know I haven't been lazy, but I wonder what I've been, like, where it's all gone. You, you know? Well. I'm a worker, you know, and I travel and I see things, but I'm still like, I've been gone for almost 20 years. Shouldn't I have, done, you know, like, I, I don't. I feel like there should be some kind of benchmark or scorecard that says, like, you did a lot, you know? But you like, have. You've been building this. Yes. Yeah. But it's hard to remember incremental moments. Uh-huh. You, you know, like... You must not mark them. No, not really. That's I'm why. not good about it. You know, like... You should. Yeah. You should. Because when you have uh, things that happen that are meaningful and you don't mark them, you end up feeling a little bit like this. Yeah. Like, every time I've had something major happen... I've bought myself something. Really? Yes. Yeah, you do keepsakes? Kind of like- well, like I've sold my first screenplay and I bought myself a diamond necklace. Yeah. So every time I put that necklace on, I bought that with money from my screenplay. Then my second screenplay I sold, I bought, um, I was already an adult and had a household. I bought, I always, <laughs> my mom had these um, crystal glasses they were Linux glasses that had gold rim around the top. And okay. I was never allowed to touch them. And I wanted, I loved them so much. So when I saw my second screenplay, I bought a whole set of these like gold rim wine glasses. So every time I go drink a glass of wine, I go, I bought this That's money like a, yeah. from my screenplay. And it, and it serves as a sense of appreciation for how you got it more so than like yeah. Oh, yeah. it being a tangible item. Oh, like, no, no, no. Yeah. It's meaningful. I'm buying something that, and that really means something to me. Yeah. I bought something for producing your special. Did you? What'd you buy? Wife of the Party is brought to you by Caldera. Happy holidays, ladies. The season of giving is upon us. So don't be late to the party to give the best for your partner. One thing I'm giving this month is compliments each and every day to Bert for taking care of his skin with Caldera Lab. Compliments are guaranteed for Bert and for every man after he makes the leap to skincare with Caldera Lab. 100,000 men trust Caldera Lab to get clear skin, less wrinkles, and decrease signs of aging. This skincare line is a must-have for your man this holiday season. Here's what I like about Caldera Lab. It's something Bert will actually use because <laughs> this sounds really crazy, but the packaging is really pretty and it's very masculine. So he likes it out on the counter and I don't mind leaving it out on the counter. And that reminds him to use it. And he uses it all the time, especially the beard oil. 
and uh, the the face wash. I put the face wash obviously in the shower, but he uses that all the time. And I can see an improvement in like the brightness of his skin. And he definitely likes using it on his, uh, using that beard oil on his beard. Just for our audience, we have an exclusive deal. You are not going to beat this offer. Use wife at calderalab.com and get 20% off right now. Get 20% off with code wife at calderalab.com to give your man unforgettable first impressions with the best gift this holiday season. 20% off at calderalab.com with code wife. This holiday season, cross BO off your list of things to worry about. Lumi has you covered. There's a special offer. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with our exclusive code and link. Use wife30 at lumideodorant.com. That's L U M E. D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Let me tell you why you should buy Lumi. I keep their deodorant wipes everywhere. I keep them in the gym. I keep them in my car. I keep them at my Girl Scout troop meeting because teenagers stink. Let's face it. They just stink. Uh, Those deodorant wipes were my favorite thing. I love that you can use a deodorant cream in more places than just your armpits. You can use them under your boobs. And in menopause, believe me, you sweat under your boobs. Your nether regions sweat, all kind of places sweat. Hey, in menopause, the back of your knees sweat. It's everywhere. So this Lumi deodorant cream is safe to put anywhere on your body, literally. And I like that. I think that's amazing. Why be stinky if you don't have to? Lumi starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code WIFE30 at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code WIFE30. I bought something for producing your special. Did you? What'd you buy? I bought a painting in Vietnam. Oh, really? So every time I look That's at that That's what a lot painting, of people think of when they think of me as a, nah, <laughs> a Vietnamese was, painter. Well, it was more about me. Yeah. It was that <laughs> I did something that I was excited about and proud of. And now every time I look at it on the wall, the it's painting? not here. I'm pointing at it in my imagination. I know. I was like. Uh, in, in my imaginary over the fireplace. It's going over the fireplace in my living room. So every time I look at it, I'll remember that. What's that's, the painting of? It's a beautiful um, tree. Okay. That is like autumn leaves and it has a little house on it. It looks like it looks like a piece of my grandmother's farm. It's it's funny the way stuff rings like sentimentally, mm-hmm. creatively. Yeah. Yeah. My the, grandmother had these huge oak trees. They were like uh, at least two hundred years old. Huge. And every fall they all turned orange. You know, the leaves turned orange yeah. and fell. It looks like those trees in her okay. front yard. That's cool. And I love to her house. Yeah. Her house was my uh, big part of my heart. Yeah. So that's a my, my mom's house for my nephew is that way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It stays like and now now that you mention it, I don't exactly I don't know if I do it for occasions, but I do I bought a painting from the last restaurant job I had. Oh, like, okay. I bought a uh, a painting of it was like a New Orleans cuisine restaurant and they had this big painting of like Bourbon Street or Frenchman or whatever. But I bought it from the restaurant oh, cool. when they were like, I was leaving. I was done. I didn't have a, a day job anymore. So I, I guess I do it and I don't like really, really think about it that much, you know, yeah. but I definitely. I'm a sen- I have sentimentalism in me for sure. So like, but I guess I ha- I've had, I do similar things. Yeah. I bought that picture. Maybe you just don't mentally mark it. Like I'm, I know I this bought it for, for that, that reason, uh-huh, uh-huh. but maybe I should do it more. Cause like, I mean, I buy like, t-shirts you know like and yeah, like yeah yeah. yeah 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 or like um a bunch of uh i buy magnet like magnets and like cop i guess i do some of the tchotchke stuff mm-hmm. you know when i travel but i guess i should probably maybe i should get myself something after you, this comes out you should because yeah. it it is not, i have to tell you i saw my first screenplay about probably about 24 years ago and every time to this day i put that necklace on it makes me feel grateful. It makes me feel really proud of myself because it's a big deal to sell a screenplay in For Hollywood. Sure. No one does that. Yeah. And it got made into a movie. I mean, it was huge. And I spent $300 on the necklace. It's not like I bought like Yeah, you didn't Tiffany's spend your whole check and, on it. Yeah, no, but, it's this $300 yeah. necklace. But it was like little bitty diamonds. It's a little bitty cross. Even though I'm not religious, 
I just thought that was beautiful. It's very subtle. And Where it do you find that that gratefulness comes from? For you to like recognize that that recognition of that. Uh, I that's a really good question. You know, um, I worked really hard on forgiveness. Yeah, I was a really angry young lady. Um, I had some rough uh, times with my mom growing up, and yeah. I had a lot of. Um, sounds like the buzzword, but I did. I had a lot of kind of trauma because she has a borderline personality yeah, disorder. Yeah, fucking and whatever you know, rough. like you, you did. You know, like yeah. yeah. It was fucking yeah. rough. Yeah. And I was angry at her for a long time. And I was blaming her for a lot of stuff that really wasn't her fault. It was, there were choices that I was making. So I like to be mad at her about, you mean, or like, like I'm this way because you did that to me kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Instead um, of just going, well, at some point you choose your own fucking behavior. Yeah. And you don't get to blame fucking grow anybody. Up. Exactly. Like, like, grow it's like, up. It really like, it's very crazy how easy that is. Isn't but it, it? Yeah. Like, but it's like, I have a hard time. Like I can hold a grudge like nobody's fucking business. Yeah. But, and I and I I still think of some I still have to this day. And I'm like, but I know I'm doing it to myself. Yeah. You know, like, it's a prison you build for yourself. Yeah. And you have the key, and the key is forgiveness. And the only way that I could find forgiveness was through gratitude. Yeah. So to sit down and think about my mom specifically, if we're talking about my mom. And think about what she gave me that I'm really grateful for. Like genuinely true, not making it up. My mom, I actually think I have my mom's personality. I don't have my dad's personality. Very gregarious, don't meet a stranger, talks a little loud, always happy, always friendly. As soon as the door closed, she was a lunatic. So I'm really grateful for that. I'm super grateful I watched how she functioned in those ways because it informs she how has, I like That today. was like, problems or deficits she might have had there you you did see the like the yeah. traits she had that were like her positive ones yes. yeah yeah and i'm really grateful for that yeah and i wouldn't be who i was i am today there's no way i'd be this person if i hadn't ha lived that life and that life was tied to her so at a certain age and maturity i started being grateful it comes with age yeah like, it comes with age yeah like 100%. like like you know, like it's like any, any bruise is going to take time to like mm -hmm. soften and like become a little. Yeah, I think that's true. Like, I, I find, and this may not be healthy, but I find the reason I hold on to my grudges so hard is because they they work as motivation for me in some regard. Mm -hmm. Like, this person did this. Fuck you all. Shit. Like, I am all that. Like, a no is like probably the most motivating thing for me, or a uh, somebody wronging. But, wronging me as i see it is yeah, yeah. is really what kind of like makes me go a little it can really light a fire under my ass like i'm like i'm a pretty motivated individual anyways but mm -hmm. like if someone gets something or just like anything i perceive as a slight i can like really turn into like a i'll show this fucking person and i don't know I know it's productive, but I don't know if it's a healthy way to be productive, if that makes sense. Yeah, it sounds like it might be maladaptive, right? That's a $5 word. Big word. You like yeah, that yeah. word? Like you figured out a way to adapt to those feelings to make them work for you. Yeah. But it might not be completely healthy. But yeah. at the same time, who's to say it's not healthy? Is it causing you a lot of stress? Is it making your blood pressure get higher? Or is it really, I bet sometimes it really is. Yeah, I bet probably. sometimes it really is. <laughs> probably I so. feel kind of hot right now thinking about <laughs> just, one person. Woo, right? I, I was just thinking, I was like, that fucking woman. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. Uh, yeah, I get it. I did like. That stuff motivates Bert too sometimes. He's not competitive, but he definitely sometimes is out to prove something. Yeah. And know? it's like, that's kind of like, it's probably a little bit like that. Like, I think the uh, infancy of that feeling is competition, like, is the easiest one to identify mm -hmm. as. And then you can kind of like stretch that out into like feeling the slide, turning the slide into like, I'm not being competitive, but I am going to show you, like, this is what I am capable of doing. I'm not, I don't care what you're doing, but this is like, yeah. You're going to, you're going to look this. at what I'm doing too, you yeah. know, and feel like, like a, I'm going to become off as a peer, if not a superior. In yeah. Some way. yeah. Watch this. Yeah. It's very much so. Yeah. yeah. Do you grow yeah. up religious? Uh, Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, my mom was from Ireland and my dad was, uh, uh, Mexican American. So, like, very Catholic. Yeah. Very yeah. Catholic. And you? Did you? Uh, not Catholic. No, but I grew up. Uh, my 
all of my families were Southern Baptist. My mom, dad, everybody is super Southern Baptist. Like a little bit above the snakes. Yeah, but not far, from, not, not but far from tongues lots of and stuff. Sc- screaming and sweating and pulling clothes off and everybody standing up and hollering. And, and not far from like speaking in tongues yeah, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, not speaking in tongues, but definitely. I was just talking to somebody about this other day. My kids and people always say I yell a lot. And I don't think I yell a lot. I think I talk loud and with passion. And <laughs> like two days ago, I heard on NPR, <laughs> why is that funny? I do. I talk loud I, I, I mean, like I just I like, fire hose people. My ex one time, she, I was like, you were yelling and screaming at me and it really upset me. And she goes, I'm passionate. Uh, well, and I was like, well, you're, yeah, be you passionate are. passionate a little quieter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was thinking about this the other day, though. I was, uh, I heard on NPR Somebody was running for an office. I don't even know who it was. And they were the reporter was saying, you know, he came across like a like a reverend. And then they uh aired a clip of his speech for campaigning for whatever office he was running yeah. for. And I went, Oh, he sounds like he's yelling when he's just preaching. Yeah. And I grew up hearing the preacher yell. And everybody yeah. in the congregation yelled, Amen. All the whole yeah. service. Nobody sat there with their hands crossed in their lap quietly. That's not how it worked. Yeah. So then I find myself in that behavior because that's normal. That's what I grew up. That's normal for me. Yeah. But it's not normal in the context of the world. No, for sure. Yes. And so then I go, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not yelling. And then my kids are like, you're like yelling right now. And I'm like, you want me to show you yelling? I'll show you some yelling. And and then you can, you can can up a bit. Yell. And then I go, that's the difference. But. I asked about church because as, although I am not religious now and I don't really get into organized religion, I find myself drawing from a lot of that stuff, like the forgiveness piece. That forgiveness piece, I really, or the gratitude piece, I learned in church. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't go to church. I haven't been to church since I was in high school. But I I remember, you know, being grateful every day for your life. That's what I was taught. You should be grateful every day for your life. And I don't mean like, thank you, God, for letting me live. That's not what I interpret it as. How do you take it? I take it as I am grateful that I'm healthy. I'm grateful that I'm happy. I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful that I have freedom, that I have independence, like that kind of grateful, which is a little different than I owe yeah. somebody well, like- something. Yeah. I, uh, I don't get drawn to that stuff Mm-mm. anymore. But I am I'm grateful for the things I have. Yeah, yeah, and I'm um I'm grateful. I try to recognize that it's not all because of me mm-hmm. that I I have things to be grateful for. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, I'm pretty pragmatic. Like I, yeah. I'd rather like be like, oh, I'm like, I I'm grateful for. I'm grateful for what we did today, like yeah. to go through this experience totally. and edit the special and do all this stuff. And I'm grateful that like you guys hopped on board and help helped me make this opportunity, you know? And, uh, but then I'm also like, I, that happened because like I worked hard to get to a certain point mm-hmm. and then Bert has taken me on to like such a degree, you know, and he worked and that happened because he worked super hard and I do believe in luck, you know, like, yeah, luck's I, part I really it, sure. like, I, I, but I believe people are lucky because they work hard. Love you know, like, is opportunity meeting preparedness. Yeah, yeah. Like I, like I think, like it is. the people who get the most break. My mom said this to me once: like the people who get the most breaks are the ones who work the hardest. Mm-hmm. And that, like, you can only control what you can control. Uh-huh. And that's like that's where I try to uh, kind of rest my hat when it comes to being grateful for things. And just be like, you know, hey man, like you tried super hard. It didn't go like what's the other what's the other option for what you wanted right. that to be look like you right, know like right. yeah but I can't growing up Catholic I I mean I I I I really just like loathe the church in a way that is not um healthy you know like yeah. like I like and you know like I had an uncle that was a priest I have family members that were nuns like. I think good people can work in these things, but like, I just, I don't, I don't like it. Like, yeah, I really yeah. don't like, I don't like, and I, and I, and I don't like disparage someone for go, you know, like yeah, yeah, it, totally. it, it, to each his own, but I really, you know, like, ugh, no, like, yeah. 
I'll light a candle for my mother, like if I'm by a, a mass or something, but like that's it. Like, and that's like, that's her. That's not like, yeah, that has like nothing to do with the church for me. Yeah. Like totally. ever. Because Catholicism is so like ritualistic uh-huh. that it's very, you know, you're like, you were saying your church was like, hey, amen. You know, like, you know, like a Catholic mass is very structured. Yes, yeah. I know. I don't understand that religion in any capacity. Bert's Catholic, right? Raised yes. Catholic, right? Bert's yeah. Catholic. Yes. Yeah. And the I've I'd never been to a Catholic mass till I was with him, and I was like, "This is meaningless. No, none of these are your words. It's a script you're told to yeah. say." Where it, in the Baptist church, when you pray, it, it not that I'm Baptist, I'm not, but the difference. But in that the is two how religions, you were raised. The how like, I was that's raised your experience is, as a child. Yeah, yes, yeah. my experience as a child is when you pray to God, those are your thoughts. You're saying, I mean, obviously the Baptist church is like. You're a sinner. Everybody's a sinner. You yeah, have but to Catholicism is sinner. that way too. It's it just, is. It's just a. Deli- but in diff- the atonement, you say what you did wrong. So instead of going, I have a hail mary. I know you do that in confession, so yeah. to speak. But I think it's different in that you have to go. These are the ways I've done wrong, and these are the things I'm grateful for, and it all comes out of your words, instead of saying. Hail Mary, Mother of God, or whatever Hail that Mary, is. Hail Mary, Grace, Lord's with the, yeah, I don't know yeah. it. I don't know it. Yeah, I mean, like, you but go it, and— what does it mean to you if it's just rote? It's the yeah. same thing everybody else says. I mean, it's conditioning. Like, yeah. I mean, like, that's what that's how I think about it. That's yeah, what, like, yeah. now that I'm older, that's how I think about yeah. it. Yeah. I don't— uh, But, I mean— I don't remember being connected to any of those prayers. Like, yeah, saying yeah. them, like, going through confession or communion or any of that kind of stuff. I don't really remember feeling, like, full, you know, from, yeah. like, in a in a way of, like, not saying I, I think some people do. I just, uh, it never really sat with me, man. Like, yeah. and I, like, I didn't like, like confession. Yikes. That was like, I was, ugh. like I want to tell a strange man yeah. something I did wrong yeah, in a box. This, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been six weeks since my last confession. Like, like he cares. Or no, right. you know what I mean? This is like, and priests are human. They have day jobs. Like, they're yeah. like, I was like, oh, fuck, this kid's not so bad. I wish he wouldn't bother me with this. You yeah, know? right. But it's about, like, to me, it's about conditioning now that I'm older. And then when I was younger, it was like, it was not creepy or anything to me, but it was absurd. Like, I, it did seem a little like, I don't get it. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And so if I was ever uncomfortable, it was probably from a place of, like, not understanding something right, as opposed right. to being, like, uh, feeling uh, like anti-establishment or anything like that. Right, I, I didn't right. feel like I didn't understand. Right, you know, right. like, it, to me, it felt like math class. I never quite got it. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. When you left Texas, why, what were you, do, were you going to be a comedian? No. I was um going to go to school in San Francisco and finish up, I was going to study music and finish up my degree. I didn't know you played music. I, 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 I play, I sang in bands in high school and like post-college and we were real, real bad. <laughs> uh, so like but I like you know like I was but I love music and I still go see it all the time yeah uh, and I was like that's what I'll pursue that's what, what will make me happy and then um, you know there's nothing like getting a structured version of something you love to take the joy out of it yeah right yeah so I w- ended up in San Francisco for a little bit then I ended up in San Diego for a little bit and then my friend and I didn't like love I liked both cities but I wasn't like falling in love living in them you know right, like right, right. And I was like, in Portland, this was like, you know, probably almost 20 years ago, was a much more affordable city then. And I got there and I was like, oh, this is cool. Like these people are like weird and artsy. And like, and then I I fell into stand up like a year or two after I got there. Like I always liked stand up, but I didn't, there wasn't a way to pursue it in Fort Worth, Texas. Like there wasn't a way to. uh, There wasn't Houston though. Yeah, but I didn't know that, you know, and this is like pre- major social media for the most part oh, like sure. so like i didn't know you could like what's an open mic like how do you like none of that shit was on the table right. like and i just went to a comedy show and i was like this is the greatest thing ever you know like and i was like i'm i saw it and then i was like all right i'm gonna do that yeah and then it was a few months later i actually did it yeah did you watch comedians growing up yeah who'd you uh, watch cosby Ugh. Hello. Uh, yeah uh everybody carlin Pryor, like eddie murphy mm-hmm. the big ones and then snl was like um, I like truly I thought comedians were like only stand up comics. I didn't like I didn't know the people on SNL were considered comedians when I was like young. I was like, I think they're like actors or something. You know, like yeah. I didn't know. I, I guess I'd never even thought about it. But I, mean, I loved Chris Farley. I loved Adam Sandler. You know, um, 
I can't. Uh, Roseanne, I loved. Lopez. Yeah, there was a ton of them. But I, there was no pursuit for it. Like, there was right. no avenue. And then when I finally found one in Portland, I was like, okay, we'll see if I can do this. Because I wasn't playing music. And I just wasn't. And I kind of like, my first couple of years in Portland, I kind of just did what I was doing in Fort Worth. You mm-hmm. know, like bartending, bartending and drinking and, and like around. being social. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so how'd you figure out how to do stand up? How'd you figure it out? Do you just have an instinct for it? Did you oh, watch no, people? I don't think very, I don't think I don't think anyone really comes out fully for like real. Like, oh, no, no, no. That's what yeah, I mean, yeah. though. How did you oh. form yourself? What did you do? Did you inundate? Did you just go to the I, I, I've been day? very repetitious, like okay. extremely. I think I have a a fair amount of natural ability when it comes to yes, stand up. Like you are not, very funny naturally yeah. and you're a very good writer. Thank you. The thing I can do well is like work pretty hard. Like, you know, like, so like I wrote like, and I don't write this way near as much as I used to, but I would go to coffee shops like three or four times a week, sit down, write, 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 like work on ideas and write and tape and write Uh, in, in the beginning and like do every, like if there was a, my like people knew where to find me based on like, what shows were happening, what open mics were. I was always at them in Portland. And it was a smaller scene. Mm-hmm. And now, um, you know, as you start to gain a little more ability and know how to do things, maybe you take your foot off the gas in certain areas and kind of press it more. So I guess, like, I was, like, writing a ton. And there was, like, kind of some small stuff happening in Portland. There was a festival. And people were kind of starting to pay attention to it locally. Mm-hmm. And that was that was exciting too because I think the I've said this before, but like I think the big one of the biggest things in comedy is like who you start to work with and who you start to be around. Yes, the company it's like it is like my mother said the company you keep yes. like as as your friends like even as you grow old is a really valuable thing. It like, is yeah. essential. Yeah. So like you guys, you need people around that like meet your energy level or raise yours. Yes. If you're the best person in a group. At something, you got to keep your foot on the gas the whole time or you need to go be around another group of people, I find, to, like, keep producing. You know, like, Bert has his peers, like Tom and all these other big acts, like, and that's good. Like, those guys have each other. Being Mm -hmm. at the top, I think, can, uh, and being the best person in your group, or uh, creatively minded, I think, can be pretty... um, a pr- it can be a stagnating position. To I was going to say stifling yeah. a little yeah, bit, yeah, right? Yeah, Because that is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to surround yourself with people you can learn from. Yeah. Because then you that's how you grow. And is that how you, when you were, I mean, I guess you're still writing, but when you were acting and stuff, is that like, did you try to keep like community around you? Like, like how, how are you making yourself get better? Because for me, it's like around, it's being around people and watching other people do this. Uh. That's a good question. When I was, I, I, I had dabbled in acting for like five minutes. Okay. I went to school to study in New York. I yeah. studied acting. So I was really into the studying. And obviously I was in school. So I was surrounded by a lot of other students. But I didn't know a lot of actors outside of that. When I moved to LA, I had plan, I'd started writing in New York. When I moved to LA, I was going to continue acting. And I just got a real bad taste in my mouth here. You know, I went to see an agent who was like, you got to, you got to choose. You either got to gain 15 or 20 pounds or lose 10 pounds. I weighed 110 pounds at the time. He was like, you're in between. You're not the like cute hot girl and you're not the fat best friend. You're kind of in the middle. And I went, I'm on choose to stop acting. Did that really happen? That's like, yeah. Yeah, Fucking I could nuts. name the agency and name the person I met with. I left that meeting. He told me in the meeting, he said, I think you need to stop eating lunch, start smoking cigarettes, and drop 10 pounds, or you need to start eating cheeseburgers and gain 20. And then you then this we'll have guy, a lane you for should, you. That guy should not be like, around creative wow, people. Wow, okay. I'm just going to focus on writing. How they fucking, some of these reps talk, it's fucking insane. Right? Yeah. And I was young at the time. Well, I was 27 when I moved here. You were young. But, That's a young person. But still, imagine if I'd been 20 and he'd said that to a girl. I'm sure I was not yeah, the first girl like he'd you're, said it to. There's a diff- world of difference in those two yeah. ages. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, ah, uh, you know, this is not for me. But I kept, I somehow, I, I was still in acting class because I was still, I was really learning how to write in acting class because I was studying, um, uh, the the acting class I was in only did plays, so you know, big plays from big playwrights, um, 
really teaches you how to write. And dissecting that as an actor helped me figure out how to write screenplays, right? Yeah, and you actually saw the structure of what like, yes. things look like. And so stuff. I was really reading all these great plays and then acting only in class. I wasn't really pursuing or or, or um You were not auditioning? No, I was like, mm, I'm not going to do that. And I didn't really know that I was doing that to inform my writing. I knew that like in retrospect. But I met a director who was just graduating from AFI and she started putting me in her films, just little bit parts in her films. So I kept acting in that way, but I just really started focusing on writing. And then when I started writing, I wrote with a partner and we kind of did what you're talking about. We wrote six days a week, eight, 10 hours a day. I had like two Jesus. or three side job hustles. I was side jobbing. And then we wrote, we banged out eight screenplays in two years and just that's what you have to volume is a big part of it in the beginning. Volume in the beginning. Yeah. You have to like vomit be willing out. to make something. Yeah. Get it out, get it out, get it out. Cause you need to like I think in any creative endeavor, repetition is like massive because you need to be able to like find your voice. Get fundamental too. Uh -huh. Like and know how to like <clears throat> excuse me. Figure out what you're good at. Yeah. And also uh -huh. figure out what you're bad at uh -huh. and figure out like how your like your strong suits may be weakening you in some ways, mm -hmm. like and keeping you from like trying to do other things. It's very uh, informative. Yeah, and you have to do volume. And people, when people ask me about stand up, it's like I, the one thing I always say is like the more you do it, the better you will get at it. And it does not mean you will ever be good at it. Like <laughs> not it, right, necessarily. And I think that's yeah. true with anything. Uh -huh. Like you know, like uh, I've written two pilots and. The second one was definitely better than the first. Right. Yeah, and like, but nobody's kicking down my door to make the second one yet. Right. But like, so I got to write another one and another one. And I think that's, that's how people should pursue things. But we're living in an instantaneous world in a lot of ways. Yeah. Think about, I, I try to think about it this way. I was never interested in being a one hit wonder. Same. Yeah. Right. One hit wonders are exactly that. Yeah. One hit. So if that's what you want, then you go for that. But you can I was make never one saying. great piece. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to be the one hit wonder? Yeah. If, if it's built on nothing, you can't have a second hit. So you have to, you know, right, getting success right out of the gate works for some people, but it's not really frequent. No. And so you have to catch up to that. Like, you do. Some people, like, you know, comedy moves faster than it ever has in a yeah. career trajectory for sense. And like how you work, not what you're making. But uh -huh. like, and I'm like, man, some of these kids are do not have the skill set to keep up right. with what they're being what's being asked them. And some do, and some will catch up to it and some won't. But mm -hmm. it's like I get a man like, what are you supposed to do? Not take an opportunity like that's massive? You know, like Yeah, it's hard. It's yeah, hard. But they I do wonder in the state of comedy, like how it will catch up yeah. to people. I think it's harder to learn your chops like that yeah. in front of everybody. Yeah, like you that's true. Like failing, having the freedom to fail is like a very big part of becoming it's beautiful. a creative. Yeah. It's beautiful. Failure is how you learn everything. Yeah. You know, the thing about writing a screenplay is when you get the first draft out, it's garbage. And you go, Oh my God. You look at it and you're like, there's so much here to fix. Where do you even start? But that's how you have to start. Or that was well, you my start process. At, you start anyway. on page one. Like, start on it, page one. Yeah. And it may be just garbage. And you may throw out 50% of what you wrote. But you have to start somewhere. Of course. You, you know? Do. Yeah. And it's also like. And it's fun to yeah, start. It is. Building it. And like, yeah. And to like get into. I find like the place that's hard. If I can get past this, I do pretty well. It's like, whether it's a joke or a script is. Um, when I'm creating it to not edit it while I'm, yeah. while yeah, I'm yeah. making it like it's fucking, it's fine, man. Just like it should not be perfect coming out. So don't agonize over every single word or every piece of punctuation. Just like, tada, like get it yep. on the page, then clean it up. Yeah. Because yeah, and, it bogs you down. Yeah. And it's also like you build no momentum that way. That's like right. it's like, it's the, I mean, it's fucking exhausting trying to like, make something and fix it before it's made. Like yeah, there's right. no. No. Yeah. It's a vomit that we used yep. to call first draft a vomit. Yeah. Yeah. You just vomit it out and then you go I, back and clean it up. Yeah. Clean it up. Three, four drafts, like five, eight, ten drafts later, whatever it is, yeah. whatever the uh, story ten, needs. Yeah. Sometimes it's. 12, 13. Like, exactly. And you have to stay dedicated to. You do. 
You do. That's one of the reasons she, uh, I wrote with a partner at the time, and she and I would write more than one thing at one time. Because if we get stuck on something, we we don't want to write two things at a time. But so if you wanted to jump over to something, we'd jump you know. to the other one, and they were always sort of in different places in yeah. the process, so that we would we would just wouldn't let the momentum stop. That's so if, smart. It once if you hit a roadblock in this script, you'd pivot and run with that one until you hit roadblock. And then when you pivot back to the first one, that roadblock would start clearing itself up because you had take shifted your creativity somewhere else. And, and you kinda, weren't like you could see the see the force of the yes. tree, so to speak. So yeah. I think that's why we were able to write so much volume. We eight screenplays in two years is a lot. That's a shitload, dude. It's that's a one lot. every three months and like Yes, that's what we were doing. God damn. I mean, it, we would vomit a script out a whole 120 pages in about seven days. Yeah, and just like... And just bang And then you it, would get it to like... It. And have it ready to show people in three months, hopefully, like, was mm -hmm. the idea. The other thing that's beneficial, that we have, when you have two things going, mm -hmm. if you're showing somebody one of them, mm -hmm. a lot of the times they like they always ask, like, what else do you what have else going? Do you have? Yeah. yeah, and you're like, here's another answer. As a matter of fact. Uh, yeah, yeah. like, And that's like huge, you know, like... It is. And you learn... That and stand up the hard way, I think. You do? But yeah, like kind of like a lot of people, or I did rather. I guess I was kind of very much like, um, I want to be a stand up comedian. And they'd be like, okay, well, what else do you want to do? Like in the showbiz side of things, I'd be like, I mean, I like writing, but I want to like, I don't want to write on a show necessarily, unless it's like the show I want to write on. Yeah. Meaning like, I'd love to write on like, Parks and Rec or, as, you know, like some massive hit that I already enjoy. Yeah. But I'm not trying to write, write on like seven basic cable shows to like yeah, right. get Just a sniff a at something one day. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I mean, my I think my heart lies in performing and stand up and then like writing the stuff I want to write. Yeah. So uh, having those, like, so when you get those opportunities, like in stand up, like we were talking earlier when I first started doing late night sets i would always have like people say like send us seven minutes you yeah. know and you go okay and you like you like what a lot of mistakes people make is like oh you try and put like 10 minutes of material in a seven minute clip so these they can be like this guy is unbelievable yeah. you know and you're like that's not the way to do it the in my opinion the way to do it is to send them seven minutes and then have an another seven minutes ready to go when they go got it what do you think we're like because they're going to come back with notes and be like, I like this, I don't like this. And then you're going to be like, here's another seven. Like, right. can we work these in some way? And then they might be like, well, get me a tape of from three with three minutes of from tape A and two minutes from tape B. And that's our late night set. Right. And you're like, I can do that. You know, uh, like, yeah. and then you get that to them and they're like, okay. And then usually they hit you with a date after that. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's but cool. you have to have another thing. Right. You know, like, uh, two uh, things in the yeah, bag. Yeah. You totally do. I think yeah. so. I think about that too. You like do what you what do how much of how much I want my career like, you know like, Bird is my close friend and he's of my close friends. He's the one doing the best in comedy, and maybe of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about but, that. Yeah, but but he, I mean he's 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 you know if he's not the world heavyweight champ, he's definitely a top contender for the belt in that sense of mm -hmm. like who is the biggest comic in the world right at now. the he's moment. A, yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's in doing, that he's doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I wonder like how much of how much I want my life to look like that and I I think about it a lot like I I want a lot of it to look like that you do? yes that's awesome but I also like need to know how I can do it do the things I don't really enjoy doing like like I'm not great at shaking hands after shows like mm -hmm. and I mean I, I'm always nice but like yeah but Bert is like he like he loves I'm like and I mean, this is, he gives a lot of himself to his fans. He and, does. And I like have like, I'm like, I'll, I'll sit in this green room till every fucking person leaves. I <laughs> do not. <laughs> it's not that I don't care. I don't appreciate them, but I get a little anxious, you yeah. know, but then also I was like, well, you need to do that. You know, right. like, so what's a way you can do that? And, yeah. I like, and I was like, and I'm like, I sell merch now. And what I, I really, it really outside of the extra money, which is for sure nice, what has really helped me more than anything is like I can shake hands with people and talk to them for a little bit longer and feel like whether they're buying a shirt or not, that I'm like, it's fine. Like yeah. I have a reason to be out here and I don't have to like I see. 
Yeah, because I get I get a little nervous with that. Like, how do I end this conversation? Or like, you know, and while it's obviously transactional if they're buying a shirt, if it's not, if they're just like, we want to take a picture and say like, I love, I really do love that, mm-hmm. but I'm also trying to get better at being a person who looks forward to doing that. Right. that. As like, as soon as I get out there, I'm like, okay, this is fine. We can do this, yeah. you know? But like, for whatever reason, I get like, like anxious. And, and I think it's because like, I mean, I've seen so many people be drunks and I've seen so many people be annoyed, you know, like, but I like. It's overwhelming. Yeah. And like, it's I just, a lot. Yeah. And I, and he's really, really good at it. You he know, he is really good at it. And most it. people are at awesome and ask really nicely. Like, but I am, I just want to get, be- I know I need to get better at that kind of stuff. And I need to get better at like telling, promoting myself and mm-hmm. doing that stuff. Like, he's awesome at that. And I'm like, because I used to be like a snobby prick about it. I think I'd be like, you did? Why are you fucking, why has everyone got to, you know, like sell themselves, you know, oh, and it's just something. like, it's so, my, yeah, my it was such speak a for fucking, itself. it was, yeah, it was such a, fu- like a hundred percent, like, yeah, it'll speak for itself and whoever finds it, that's, a, you know, like, that's who comes to my fucking, show. What an asshole. You well, know? I don't know if it's an asshole. It's, it's a little, it's actually not kind of get valid, it to, but at the same time, it may not work. Yes. Or may not, it, the art may work, but no one might ever see it. Like, so why yeah. wouldn't you want more people to see it? Yeah. yeah. That's the point. Yeah. And, and that I, was my problem with being an actor, too. One of my problems. Yeah. Is that I was always like, oh, she'd probably do great for the part. Oh, you want the part? You can have it. That's you cool. You would really like. I'd be like, she can do it. I don't. I would never self promote. So like if somebody was like, does, like if you both were like reading in class, like wanted to read a role in class. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, Tina Oh, you do it. take it. That's fine with me. I'll do whatever. Yeah. I was like, never. I would never fight I, for my space. Have you changed that? Wife of the Party is supported by Omaha Steaks. You know I'm a big fan of Omaha Steaks. You know, we not only have them ourselves in our freezer, but I send boxes to my dad and to my uncle regularly because uh, they're big meat eaters. And I know the quality of Omaha Steaks is so good. And... One of those two guys are not really adventurous with their food choices. So I know I can get some safe things they really like to eat. And I just throw in like a one skillet meal or a side they may not usually have just to kind of broaden their horizon a little bit. Desserts there are off the hook. My dad, my uncle's favorite is the chocolate pie. My dad's favorite, I think maybe their cheesecake bites or their little mini cheesecakes. They love them. I send this to them regularly just to say I love you, but they're definitely getting some for the holidays for sure. Visit omahasteaks.com. Take advantage of 50% off site-wide. Plus use promo code PARTY at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Let's talk about Waxer. Waxer supports Wife of the Party. My kids love this product. Uh, Waxer is a woman's boxers, but there's a lot more going on than that. There's like bras, there's briefs. They have kind of sports bra looking bras. They're amazing. They're comfortable. They're soft. They come in really cute patterns. My kids are obsessed with them. They love them. I don't know about you, but if it doesn't hit the right place on your tummy, it doesn't look good in clothes. So, Personally, I'm a big fan of high-waisted underwear for certain outfits and really like boxer type underwear for certain outfits because it's more comfortable. Thong underwear is not my thing, but I can wear a waxer and then I don't have a panty line and then it's like a win-win. Waxer sent me some underwear and they're so comfortable. I gave some of them to my kids because I just knew they would love them also. So it's not only for for me, but for my kids, love Waxer's uh, underwear and their bras. They're just so soft and comfortable. If you want to experience all-day comfort and the softest underwear ever made, then you are in luck. Go to www.waxer.com and use code WIFE15 to get 15% off your first order. Again, that's www. That's how I really say it. www.waxer.com, code WIFE15. Once you go Waxer, you'll never go back. I would never fight I, for my space. Have you changed that? As you, no, not really. <laughs> I'm still kind of the same. Yeah. Um, but I know what you mean because I was never willing to stand up and say this is my space. 
And yeah. I think yours is similar in that you're saying my space is here. Find me if you can because my yeah, art elevates. I, but I need to. But it boxes I need to make you my space just bigger. The same. Yeah, yeah, like and like. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to make it bigger. And it's also like, you know, you're afraid of failing if you're trying to make it. Like, that's part of the reason I wasn't like good at like branching out. I was like, I can make something good, but there's Keeps that secret. Safe. Yeah, it's still safe if I make something good. And only the people who see it like, it. you know, like, yeah. yeah, it's it's a little um not fearful, but like you're not really doing what you should be doing to like optimize or. To like make it bigger, you know, like yeah, to grow it, to grow it, yeah, yeah. not 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 optimize, but to like to grow. I'm, my day is made every time someone sees me, you know, like and says hi, you know, like it yeah. really is. Well, that's uh, what you but, attach to. That's yeah. what you have to attach to. Yeah. Shift your paradigm to wanting more of that. Yes, not from an ego place, but from a place of pride. And pride meaning like you're really proud of what you give to the world because. I, this is going to sound very uh, like Pollyanna sweetness or whatever, but I believe what comics do is a public service. I believe that if we don't have stand-up comics, we take ourselves too seriously and we are not able to laugh at our flaws or the flaws of other people. And if you can't find levity in the things that are difficult or tragic or even ridiculous, then you can't really let go of those intense feelings to, to grow. Yeah. Right? And how, and how you, yes, and how you do it is... um Is you write intelligent jokes that make people think. Even, like, it's the way Homer. It's sometimes you think about someone's set on your way home and it makes you reflect on your own life some way. You go, I did that shit too. Yes. Yeah. And that's stupid. Yeah. Or, oh, I'm the one that that identifies as a ficus. Maybe that is ridiculous. Maybe I should rethink <laughs> yeah. that. You know what I mean? Agreed. Like I saw this interview with uh, Ethan Hawke, mm -hmm. and he was uh, who I like, but I'm not like a massive fan. But I like a lot of his stuff. But he was talking about how like if people think art is this, and I like I believe stand up comedy is an art form. One hundred percent. And I know some people don't take it in that way, oh. and they're wrong. They're like, wrong. I, I truly dead believe. Wrong. I truly believe they're wrong. They're dead wrong. But he was talking about um, how some people don't see art as like necessary, like you know, like vital in the way that like math is, yeah, or whatever. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then he goes, well, and he said this made this great point of like, let's say, um, I don't know, like you're going through a breakup or you lost your house, but then you see a movie or you hear a song, and that is like the only thing that is like. Not maybe, maybe not even making you feel better, but like making you like somebody else recognizing this, like how much despair you have. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he goes, he goes that that is no longer suddenly just art. It's sustenance. It is like a valuable thing to get you through this. Mm -hmm. And I like, uh, I thought it was a very like astute way for him to say it. Cause I, I felt that way, not just with comedy, like for with sure. Music for sure. Music for sure. Yeah. Like film, like, you know, like I, Remember during the at the top of the pandemic, uh, I I was listening to a podcast and this guy read this thing called I think it was Love in the Atomic Age by C.S. Lewis, mm -hmm. and it was about how people were really freaking out when the atomic bomb was created. Like we could decimate us. Like they they did not like there was a real fear in the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, he used this uh, like poem by C.S. Lewis to explain. Like, he used it as a metaphor for the coronavirus, essentially, being like, this is like, it's like, and basically he said the poem is saying, you were going to die at some point, and this is, it is scary, but like, do you want to spend the rest of it being scared, or do you yeah. want to like, live? do you want to give your kids a bath in the sink, or mm -hmm. do you want to have a drink with your friends? Mm -hmm. Like, and it was like these really beautiful moments, mm -hmm. and I like, so like, for me, that really like, that's an example of like, art getting you through something, yeah, and finding a calming effect for it, for me, you know, like. And I know, like, some people don't feel that way and, like, about any art. But, like, I just, I find, I think you must be in, like, okay. some kind of void. And you're, like, yeah. or, like, missing something to me. Yeah. But, that was yeah. art in a cave. Yeah. The earliest man For sure. No, shit, fucking hieroglyphics. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, art's part of our fiber. Yeah. It's part of our fiber. And, and it makes me feel better. You know, like. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I worry about that because. I'm concerned about the state of feature films 
I have been for years. Yeah. I wrote feature film screenplays. They were all comedies and romantic comedies. Yeah. Those don't get made anymore, ever. Like one a year, it feels like. And yeah. I can, so much of my human growth and development is filtered through watching films. Yeah. That taught you things. I mean, think I'm, I graduated high school in 88. So I'm older than you yeah, by a, a bit. A little bit, but not too much. John Hughes was the shit mm. when I was I was the and age they're great group. movies like and they're even fun. with the date rape shit in them. There's a lot of date rape God, shit in the movies. It, yeah, but that it was a different. It informed my entire teenage years. Yes, of course, all it did. of that. And now I go, where's that for our kids? It's Twilight. Oh my God! But it is, you know, I guess it is, that. and that. Era is Twilight, but what is and it that was, now? I don't that's know. That's 15 years ago now. You know, like I, I think more than. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like so, it's a long time ago. Yeah, and I, because those like, kind of things don't sell tickets. You don't sell tickets unless it's a Marvel movie. Yeah, and a Marvel movie, hi, is fantasy, is nothing reality. The movies that I, when I got to a certain age, I realized that I did not cry. I because of the way I grew up. I would not allow my emotions to be shown to my mother because it was unsafe. Yeah. So if I did any emotion. Became a survival instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Any emotion at all. I was like a complete blank slate with my mom. So at a certain point, I realized this was really unhealthy. Like I don't. I How could, old were you when you realized it? In my early 20s. Okay. And uh, I, my friend. Same friend who told me the thing about Bert that he's a child. And if yeah. I if I just realize that he's a child, I'll be happy in my marriage. Yeah. He said to me, you are the saddest person I've ever known and you smile every day of your life. Until you cry, you're not going to really be able to feel joy. You need to just start crying because yeah. he knew I couldn't cry, right? That's one of those things. Yeah, somebody who knows you well will pick up on those things. He, d he did. And so I just went, all right, I'm going to watch every sad movie, Terms of Endearment, Steel Magnolias, <laughs> Uh, Silkwood, uh, like anything uh, yeah. where you cannot help yourself. You're yeah. someone's dying and you're crying. Yeah. And that's how I started learning how literally like that it's okay to cry, that I'm not scared of these emotions. It sounds really stupid and very like therapy. But you, but it's, that's the vehicle to get you to it was. Like, feeling like a recognition. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. You to know, go, like, oh, this is a safe place for me to cry. And I don't need to identify what trauma these tears are tied to. Julia Roberts just died in Steel Magnolias. I'm fucking crying. Yeah, yeah. And it's you like, know? yeah. And it's uh, like, sometimes you just need to figure out how to open up the can before exactly. you figure out what's inside. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like, I believe that, like, my best friend. His mom passed away like a year and a half ago, two years, maybe two years coming up. I think two years coming up. And he came, I brought him out to New York for his birthday and we like hung out and we went and saw shows. And my mom's been dead for five years, you know, like, so I have like a little more experience in this place. And he had, had not been grieving very open. Like I knew he was sad, but he was like, you know, sometimes there's just a gray around people when they yeah. lose someone yeah. and it's fucking brutal, mm -hmm. but they... You don't know how to shake it out of them, you know? And then we went and saw a show and we were both like bawling. Oh. Like, cause it was like this little, the character, this little girl loses her mom and she's like, it's a funny show, but it's like, and we were both like, I had like, I've known this guy my whole life mm -hmm. and we are like very close, but like, this was like an intimacy. I was like, you're okay, right? And he was like, and it was like more like a, a, a grander thing than yeah. just this goddamn show. Yeah. yeah but like, totally. I was like, I love you. You're okay. Right. And he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm going to be, I, yeah. I like it. And I, and I believe he will be, you yeah. know, but like, you know, like he just couldn't open up like, yeah. you know, like, but art did that. Yeah. Yeah. And it can do that for a lot of people. And you know, and some people just need to go and be like, here's my problem doctor. Yeah. Like, and can be open. You well, know? I was doing that too, but Were I still you really, Oh, yeah. yeah. I started therapy when I was 23. Yeah. So you were trying to. F I was broken, man. But you were but you were trying to figure it out from a diff few different paths. or like Yes, I was broken. Yeah. I had a real drinking problem. And I was like, uh, I mean, drinking problem to the point where I lost my hair and my liver was enlarged. And my doctor was like, yeah, you kind of got to really? stop. I'd been arrested for drunk driving, been arrested for vandalism. 
super sexy hot mama. Jesus, Leanne. <laughs> that was a disaster. We would have been awesome friends. I know, right? <laughs> we would have been totally. Nobody ever thinks that I ever was well, like that, like, but I was. You're I not, was like, wrecked. I don't ever think you're, I've never thought of you as like a stick in the mud at all. But oh, like, well, thank you. I'm not a stick in the, the mud. But, but like, but I do like, I do see you as someone who has her shit together a lot of, in a lot of ways. I way. do. You know, it's because yeah. I went to therapy. Yeah. It's because I was driving. I was just talking to my friend about this. What did you vandalize? Uh, I was drunk one night and I was driving up and down a residential street and I'd pull over and throw rocks in people's windows, bust their windows out. <laughs> I was, I had a little pent up anger. <laughs> I'd just pull over and go, wham, 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 get in my car, wham, wham, wham. I didn't actually get arrested. So you were like Jenny Forrest Gumping the house, but yeah, like yeah. you didn't have any like trauma uh, associated with this house in particular. No, I was just fucking ripping it apart. I was so angry. I was oh. just a really angry, angry. Like early 20s? Yeah. 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 Late t I was 19 when I was doing that. I got arrested when I was 20 for drunk driving. And I was drunk. When did I, in my 21st birthday, I drank a fifth of vodka by myself. And I wasn't even that badly drunk because I'd been drinking since So I was much 13. that you like. Yeah. I've been drinking a lot. And I mean, my hair fell out. I was bald right here. Uh, well, uh, and it was from the Completely boozing? bald. And from here down, like bald like this, like the inside of your arm. It was from alcohol. Really? And stress. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to the doctor to get my hair checked, he was like, your liver is enlarged. Just, like, how much are you drinking? And I said, I don't drink. And he was like, honey. That's fucking. Honey, I was like, I don't. I don't drink. I don't ever drink, ever. And I just drank a fifth fucking vodka. Yeah. So was I he, quit drinking. Were you drinking, You, but you were drinking all the time then? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I would go to class when I was in college. Where'd you go? Uh, I went to West Georgia College, and okay. then I went to Georgia State, which okay. is a big college downtown Atlanta. But I was, I would, I would get my the place shit that's right done. right next to the varsity. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I get my shit done, and then I just get hammered, and then I get my shit done, and I get hammered, and I get my shit done. So you're kind of like a functioning alcoholic at this point in your I life. I think so. Even yeah. though I never called myself an alcoholic, my sorority, I was in a sorority. My sorority did tell me that I needed to go to rehab. They called me in and was like, "You need to go to rehab. You have a serious problem." And I was like, "Fuck you! I'm changing schools." Yeah. So, and then that's what you went to Georgia State or whatever. I was in Georgia State, kept drinking. Um, it was just a wreck. So that, at a certain that is point, what? Like, isn't that crazy? So one night I'm driving home from my dad's. My dad's an hour away from Atlanta. I was in school in Atlanta. I was driving home and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get the car at about 120 and I'm just going to turn the wheel to the left and just, I'm just going to be over. I'm, I can't do this anymore. And then, don't laugh at me. Desperado came on the radio. I fucking love that song. That song changed my life. Yeah. Well, hey, it, it, it um in that moment my dad was in that song during my parents' divorce. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That I song changed my life in that. that moment. Because yeah. in that moment I was going, I just need this to be over. I'm just gonna 120 yeah. miles an hour, turn the wheel, and I'm fucking done. And then my brain went, My luck, I won't be done, and I'll be paralyzed from the neck down, and I'll have 80 years of living as paraplegic. Yeah. Fuck that, but I'm done. And that song came on, and the very last last part that says, you better let somebody love you before it's too late. Yeah. I'd cried through the whole song, yeah. but that last phase did me in. Did me fucking in. And from that point on, I started searching for the answer to why. Why am I drinking like this? Why am I so unhappy? Why am I... Uh, in relationships for three months at a time, and that's it. Yeah. Why am I unhappy? Why? I just started asking why, why, why? And it took me a few years after that to stop drinking. It's just a DUI is what, no, I didn't stop drinking after the DUI either. It was a little bit after that. I got a DUI when I was 20, and I stopped drinking shortly when I was about 22. So you don't drink it, but you drink now. Oh, I drink you now. But like you have, when you say drinking, you mean like mobbing down beers and shit. Like I, I don't, I don't drink enough to matter. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I might have one drink a week, maybe, and maybe every yeah. two weeks. And I, if we're out at a party, I usually have two, but that's it. Yeah. And I don't really care anything about it because what I was thinking, what was, what was happening for me in my twenties is that I was going, it's not the alcohol, it's the pain. It's the pain yeah. of what's, I'm drinking because I don't want to feel. I don't want to feel all these things I've been sitting on my whole childhood. Yeah. So I need to go to somebody who will help me unravel yeah. that. Yeah. And that's why I went to therapy. Do you 
it's, it's interesting. You said something that I thought was interesting was that you said, uh, I need just to figure out why I'm doing this. Yeah, why? Because yeah. I tend to be like, I, I don't need to figure out why, but I know I want to stop like hurting. So I'll stop doing this, uh-huh. but I don't need to figure out why. You don't I'm need like, to know why? I think, you know, maybe not right now. Like for some of the stuff that I like, I know was issue. Like uh, opening it up, I'm not ready to open up some things. Yeah. Like I'm just not, but I'm also not being destructive about them. Mm-hmm. Like a lot, I'm definitely better. Like I don't drink like I used to. Yeah, and yeah. I don't, I don't do drugs like I used to. Yeah, like, yeah. uh, and drugs were never, booze has always been the thing. Drugs have never really been that big a deal for me. Yeah. Um, if I'm not putting out bad behavior because of this thing, and I'm fully, to, fully willing to admit this could be the wrong approach, but that, then I then it is solved in some way. Mm-hmm. Like to me, even if I have never like come to the reckoning of like some of the things like that have happened to me or like yeah. that happened like uh, to my family. You yeah. know, like I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not getting loaded and that's not happening to me in mm-hmm. my life as an adult. Yeah. So uh, it's solved in some ways. Yeah. Like, but maybe I, maybe I don't need to talk about it ever. You know, yeah. like, but maybe I do. Like, I don't know. Like, am I just going to trudge some shit up that's going to like well, bum me the fuck out for a while? Or is it going to be like, no, it really helped. You know, like, because I think some people find the issues with their problems and then they like have them. But they're not like they don't. They're not resolved. They don't resolve them. Yeah. No. I, that but, was. And they're just. Never... And they're also still fine. You know. Right, like, right, but right. they're where they were. Right. You know. Like. Yeah. There's no progression. Yeah. That was not my experience. Yeah. But I will tell you how I relate to what you're saying. A um, couple years ago, I did someone else's podcast where we went through all the stuff. It was the mental. It was the mental. Mental, mental illness happy hour. Thank you. The oh, mental the, uh, illness happy uh, hour. Who says that? Who does that? I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. Um, he asked me to be on his podcast because, you know, he talks about people who have a mental illness or have lived with someone who yeah. has a mental illness. And my mother has never been diagnosed, but based on my own therapy and what I've explained to my therapist and what I've read myself, I believe that she has a borderline personality disorder. Then she probably does. If uh, you put the word, you like, people that like, have, I have borderline that, I have, like, I have don't get diagnosed. I have about people in my, in, my, in my family and I'm like, I don't know what it is, but it's something. Something's it broke. A, yeah. Something's broke over there. And it's good we've moved past the like they're an a- they're just an asshole. No, like no. we should let like, diagnosing people with that is like yes. It's good we've moved past that yes. as people. A little more compassionate uh, to go. Yeah, mm, but like the, they, they might be an asshole, but they also there's also something going. I know plenty of other assholes who don't. Oh, totally. Do this totally. Yeah. Well, I talked about some stuff on the podcast with him, where he stopped me and went. Was it oh. Paul Gilmartin? Yes. Yes. Thank you. He used to be Good host job. of Dinner of a Movie on TV. Yes, he did. Yeah. And I loved that show. And yeah. he was lovely. And, and, yeah, he's and a really, fu- and he's a really funny guy. He's a lovely guy. guy. He's yeah. very funny. Yeah. Does a lot of woodworking. Did you know that? He's a woodworker. <laughs> no. But um, very, it feels like a lot of people who have like trauma, like go into crafting to some I know, degree. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in that, he explained to me why one of my experiences with my mom was very abusive. And I had never seen it from that perspective. And I went home and I was really shaken up about it. And I stayed shaken up for like a day. And then I went, hold on. Actually, not sure I agree with that perspective. I don't want to own that perspective. I will not accept that perspective for myself. I don't need to feel that way. And I actually don't feel that way. And there's nothing in my life that reflects that that is causing me any problems or damage. So I'm actually not going to agree with that. Yeah, like your, her diagnosis can be often still respected or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. That, that That's not mine. Like, and perhaps it's what you're saying is that I'm just refusing to accept that that's mine, but I don't see any need to carry around a it's pain not all or a burden like, that I, it's not mine. Every experience that could be trauma for other people. Exactly. It's not necessarily trauma to someone like exactly. You know, like, and so I know what you're talking about. Some of that stuff, if it's not causing the problem I had in my 20s was my stuff was causing me problems everywhere. I was drinking so much that it, for me, the root of my problems were some things that I had not addressed. And once I addressed them, the drinking, the need and the, the focus or the, the escapism that I was looking for oh, it's the left. Best. Yeah. Well, like well, when left. you're drinking, it's like, and you're having fun, it's the best. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. And I still enjoy that. Yeah. But uh, to do it every day is a different kind oh, of escapism. Yeah. 
that's a, a denial of yeah. uh, of your feelings. That's a, a repression of feelings. It's crippling. It's yeah. crippling. And I couldn't move forward. I didn't have any healthy relationships. I was physically unhealthy. Did you have like an aha moment? Like a breakthrough? Yeah, the Desperado was. Yeah. And then yeah, that's I started one of them, unraveling yeah, Like stuff. I mean, that was your like, your kind of your bottom, so to speak. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then. But like going through therapy, like when you're actually starting to get help instead of just recognizing like I need it, mm -hmm. like because like I went to therapy, and I should I should probably go back at some point. Like I'm like I'm not saying I don't need to, but yeah. like I had a couple of different therapists, and I was like I'm fucking like I'm I I gave it a year and a half, and I was like with somebody, I was like this is not. Like, I needed to get further along faster. Like, I got really oh, tired of uh, the monotony of going every week and the yeah. monotony of like, and feeling like I don't, I, like, I'm not getting better. I'm just right. like coming in here and getting emotionally bruised. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I stopped going. And you know, I think, like, of the like literally like 70 sessions I would have done or whatever it was, I think like two of them, I was like, I feel better. And, the, <laughs> and like, and the return rate was not high enough for yeah, me, yeah. you know, and maybe that's the therapist or maybe that's me not like giving them enough, but. Maybe, maybe it was, you just weren't ready. Maybe you don't need it. Maybe, who knows? Yeah. It's not for everybody, Um, but therapy is definitely for me. I'm still in therapy. I yeah. go see my therapist every week because I'm married to a lunatic <laughs> and I'm raising two girls 90% of the time by myself. How do you guys? And uh, we have all this company and I need someone to go, I need someone now. My therapist has evolved. I was in therapy in New York for two years. And then I moved out here and I wasn't in therapy for a long time. And when I figured out I was in love with Bert, I thought to myself, my mom has six divorces. My dad has two. I do not how to know how to be married. I do not have an example. A, I don't know how to do this. I need some therapy. Again, that's like goes back to the like, the more you do something, <laughs> you might not ever you might not ever get good at it. I know, you don't right? like it. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know how to do this. And I was in a relationship with my writing partner that was exactly like my relationship with my mom. Same exact personality type, same exact dysfunctional relationship. And I went to therapy for twofold. I don't want this relationship with her, and I don't want another one like this ever again. And I'm in love with this person. And I think I'm going to get married and I don't know how to do it. And I don't have an example. So That's pretty fucking scary. I need help is what I thought. Yeah. And so I got into therapy and what first day, first session sat down and went, I have these two things going on. I need help. And, um, that's how I approached it is like, I really need to learn how to manage my own emotions because my mom, if my mom was married to you, and you got in an argument with her, she would divorce you. So when I was 13, I got in an argument with my mom and she didn't speak to me for a year and a half. And so if you ever, because of her personality disorder that I believe she has that she's never been diagnosed with, she cannot tolerate someone that doesn't align with her. That becomes It's her way or the highway kind of shit? Or is it, yes, yeah. but beyond. Like, like... My dad had custody of me when I was 13, and she always knew I was moving to his house. And when I moved, she just went, fuck you, you're dead to me. Really? Yeah, for a year and a half. She didn't see or talk to me. So, and she she did that multiple times throughout my life with her. I don't talk she to her anymore. got quiet. Yeah, got she, quiet? Yeah. Would, would tell her whole family they couldn't talk to me because I was dead to her. I was excommunicated from the entire family. Was her family like that, too? Not really. No? Like, so, no, but it wasn't like was a, a learned, tyrant a little but bit. it wasn't a learned behavior from, no. like, it wasn't a, like, you're just like your mom or whatever. No. Yeah, no, no. No, like, no, her mom's lovely, sweetest Yeah, that's what I mean, like, yeah. lady, but she was, she was so, um, she was so forceful with her feelings and her needs that she would force everybody into kind of taking care of her needs. And then I have a, just get kicked a out. family member like that. Like, you and do. yeah. And to be fair, that person has gotten um, better as they've gotten older mm -hmm. and like ha has tried to do things better. But man, that shit is it's difficult. exhausting. It's you, exhausting. You know, like, yeah. and you also like, because you also like, you get tired of being the bigger person and that oh. fucking sucks. I would like talk to someone 
and my family and I'd be like, why do I got to do this when this person's always the one being the asshole? And they're yeah. like, I don't know. And they're like, it's just easier this way. And I was yeah. like, well, not for me. Yeah. You know, like, like not, not for what I'm dealing with all this time. Yeah. And they were like, I know, but can you do it for me? You know, like, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, they were, I lost it on them and we went back and forth, like in a really vicious fight. And then the person I would go to for counsel was like, why couldn't you just let it go? And I was like, now I'm the asshole, even though you know that he's wrong, you know, like, and that's uh, the exact scenario I grew up. Yeah. And, uh, and they'd be like, yes, you know, better. And like, they know better. They're just selfish. Like. And it was like one of those things. And I was like, I fuck it. And like, that's me talking to my mom about my older brother. And now me and my older brother do really well, you know, yeah, yeah. like, and I'm sure I, I did not make shit easy on him either. But, right. Uh, man, I fucking hated it. Like, yeah. like, I'm just like, so like I'm doing things right. And now I have to do, suffer them doing things that I see as wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I can't even stick up for myself. Yeah. And they're like, no justice. Yes. Yeah. Because like, I'm going to have gray hairs. Cause and I was like, I get it, you know, but sometimes you, if you're a parent, I'm sure you just want to come home and have everyone be quiet. Be peaceful. Yeah. 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 That's all the, all they want for one day. Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea how people parent. Parenting is an interesting gig. Yeah. It's a really interesting gig. If, especially if you didn't have a good role model. I had a great role model on my dad. I have like an amazing one on my mom. Yeah. Amazing role model yeah. on my dad. And, and his whole family are just really good, salt of the earth, solid people. Yeah. My mom had a lot of those people in her family too. And she also had some people that were a little dicey. Yeah. But but my mom had good, solid people in her family as well. And I'm lucky that I had that. Um, but I can't imagine what it would be like if you didn't have somebody that you could go, oh, yeah, 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 that's that part, that one works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And where you go. You Did know, your like- mom see you do stand up? Uh, only once. Only like once? she know, but I mean, she was alive for me doing it, but she saw me do it once. Yeah. Uh, and then um, so she saw it. Like she knew. Like she was like like any mother. She was like really worried when I told her I was pursuing it, which made perfect sense. She actually said, "I called her. I was like, hey, I'm dropping out of college to be a stand-up comedian.'" And she was like, "I was afraid you were going to say that <laughs> I was because afraid. I told her I'd been doing it." Yeah. yeah. And then she, and I was like, "I think I'm good at you know blah blah blah." And then. She saw me do it once and then we we talked about it other times and she knew like I was doing it, yeah. you know, like, and things were like going in the right direction. Right. Uh, but when I did Conan for the first time, like Aww. she got cable. So she would watch me do Conan. Which, oh, yeah. I wanted her to fly out, but she was like, I'll just be too nervous. I can't do it. And then like, uh, and then I wanted her to come out for my half hour in New Orleans. She was like, I, I can't do it. I'm too nervous. Like, she'll be too nervous not to be out, but to, like, for me. Yeah. And uh, uh, that always has, like, a, been a real uh, bummer for me. That I understand it. It's not that she didn't want to be there. She wasn't supporting, but, like, she was just like, I, I'll be too, way too scared. You yeah. know, like. Bert's dad's the same. Really? Mm-hmm, the yeah. exact same. Yeah. He just, in the past year, has been able to go see him live. And yeah. Bert's been doing it for 20-some years. Yeah. I, yeah. But I take it as, like, an endorsement of how much she loved me, not that she didn't want to be there. Yeah. And though, so, like, uh, and I was like, oh, well, you'll come to the next one, you know, the next big thing. And then, so, it's, you know, like, it's, um, it's tough because she never got to see the next big thing. And then she was still worried about me all the time, like, with, because it's not, the most stable profession, but I'm stable in it. You know, yes, like, you are, yeah, definitely. like I've worked hard to be stable in it. And you're growing. Yeah, I am. Yeah. That's the other thing. So I wish like, I wish you gotten to see me do come to like when I did Colbert and come like being the Ed, Ed Sol- like do one of those things. Mm-hmm. I really wish, but that's the on, only regret I really have about having nothing, maybe not the only one, but like having, I would have wanted that, her to see that in my career. Like, cause she, she knew who Conan was and she like knew that the Comedy Central thing was a big deal. But my mom didn't give a fuck about <laughs> showbiz at all. Right. Yeah. She was just too busy trying to keep everybody fed. You know, right, like. Right. Uh, and she was a nurse. You know, like, so it was like she worked 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. You know, right. like. And then she would like poke us in our beds and be like, you have to go to school. You know, like she that's what, how it worked. Now, like, that's like I, she saw some of it. And I think she knew that I was good at it, even though it wasn't for her. She was like. She saw me once and she was just like, I don't like hearing you talk about sex ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's like a real, you know, like 
proper Irish woman from Southern Ireland. So it's not like, you know, like they're all, I guess I would say they're a little less uh, like conservative over there now with that stuff, but definitely not like Americans and definitely not, not American, not that generation gap of ki- American no. boys to like, you know, f- 50 year old Irish woman and 15 year old teenage boy is very right. different, you know? How did she get here? Why did she come here? Um, she was a nurse. She was an RN. Um, and uh, when Fort Worth was becoming like a, a bigger city and they needed like hospitals and stuff and it was kind of moving out of its cow town phase, uh, which is what they call it still, the cow town. But they recruited a bunch of Irish, English, and Scotch nurses. Really? Because like, like they needed them from somewhere mm-hmm. and they needed them fast. So like hmm. if you're in Fort Worth, like a lot of them are, are dead now because they're <laughs> old ladies. But uh, yeah, if any of them are still working, like if you have an Irish or English or Scotch, there's a good chance like in Fort Worth in that area. I know them because they they all kind of came over around the same time. Right. And uh, was what, your mom older? Uh, my mom was 36 when she had me. Oh, okay. And I, I think she was so my older brother. She had my older brother at 34. I think. I think that's right. Yeah. Because I was. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So she was a little older. She died at 72. So pretty young. That's really young. Yeah. Was she ill? No, that was kind of like a freak thing. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Appreciate that. Uh, but so she came over and then um, that's what she did. You know, like she was like, she was fucking good at it. She was really proud of it. So labor and delivery, women's health, uh, ER, like she did all of it. Like, and she worked at like half the hospitals in the county. Like she was, she was like, you know, like it was, my mom was proud of like about, three things and like she, one of them was that she was Irish one of them that was she was a nurse and she was proud of her sons you know like so it's, it's just pretty good three good things to like it's pretty awesome on, yeah hang on your hat yeah how did she meet your dad it's a it's actually like maybe the only cute thing about their marriage mm-hmm. um my if I think I'm recalling this is how I have it in my head so if it's if it's wrong I don't know who's going to call me out. I was going to say yeah, too bad. They were all dead. It's fine. I could, I could say they were both fighter pilots and no one would know. <laughs> but my dad was from Fort Worth, right? Mexican American though. Like, so I think he's second generation Mexican American. Not sure. My dad was in the seminary at one point and was, but he got kicked out for whatever. He, they said, but he says he, he told me he didn't get kicked out. He said, they, we think it's best if you don't come back. And he was like, I think it's also best if I don't come. So it was kind of one of those things. But, my grandmother wouldn't let him back in the house. And uh, uh, my Uncle John, who had also gotten kicked out of the seminary, not my real Uncle John, but like, had also been kicked out of the seminary, uh, along with R.O., they all were like looking for a place to live. And Johnny found a place and he started dating this Irish nurse upstairs and they all lived together. And it was my mom's, my Auntie Mora. Mm-hmm. So. Then, 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 like, Maura and Johnny hit it off and started to go even better. And then she was like, oh, Kate's, you know, like, and kind of fucking, they introduced. And there's, like, there's all these, like, Texas Fort Worth guys married to Irish nurses. And they're so, yeah. How about that? Yeah, it's so funny because all their husbands are dead. And they all came to this country together. And it's all they, all they have left is who they came here with. It's, they're a a resilient group of women. I'd say that, yeah, like, they're very... Because, like, when my mom died, all these women I hadn't seen in years who are all retired uh, were coming by the hospital, you know? And they were, like, so brassy and so mean to one another. And my mom was, like, sick and, like, not really conscious. And they would be, like, making fun of how dumb the other one's husband was, like, across my mom's. Oh, my God. It's bleak, but it was fucking hysterical. Her... One of my mom's best friends, Carmel, she started smoking in the vestibule. And oh like, she was like, we used to sell these here. I don't care. You know, like, <laughs> and they were like really brassy ladies. And most of them were Irish. Some of them were English and Scotch, though. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, I it was a cute story. That. Like yeah. my folks getting together. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And the divorce was much different. But well, yeah. aren't they always? Yeah, yeah. They were pretty rough yeah. divorces. How did your folks meet? Uh, Blind date in high school. Really? Yep. My dad had... My dad's family sort of adopted a, a a guy that was in high school, a neighborhood kid. It was like a third cousin or something. Um, Lost some family members or something like that? Uh, no, dad was super abusive. And my grandpa was like, he's living at our house now. Yeah. So he was dating my mom's best friend. 
and they wanted to double date. So uh, that he asked my dad and my mom, and the four of them went on a double date, and it was like love at first sight. Really? Yeah, they dated. My dad was, I think, a senior in high school, and she was a junior, and they, and they got married three weeks after my mom graduated high school. Wow. So, yeah, my mom was like, they couldn't wait to be in love. 19. So they were very young when they got that married. She was 19. He was 20 when they got married. And then they had me. Can you imagine being married at that age? I knew. That's like I knew. crazy to me. It's like, insane. I had, you're a child, just a complete child. You know, you're a baby. As yeah, Georgia. Like, Georgia would be married now. Yeah, that's it's insane. Like we were, insane. I was in Austin this weekend and they were like doing the festival and there were a bunch of like proms downtown. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look at all these infants. Like, they're, Yeah, and that was us thinking yeah. we were all oh, big shots. Oh, my God, for right? sure. Right? For the smallest bit of autonomy, you uh -huh. know? And you're like, I'm not a grown man. I am like, it's insane. It's like, insane. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they got their high school sweethearts. They were married for 10 years. Um, uh, That's a pretty good run, especially for a young age. It's a pretty good run. Uh, 10 years, I was seven when they got divorced. Okay. So, um yeah, so 10 years they were together. Yeah. I think it's a... It was both of their longest marriages. <laughs> oh, really? But <laughs> yes. And strangely, my mom, went after every divorce, keeps going back to my dad's last name. She doesn't go back to her maiden name. She goes back to my last name, my dad's last name. It's really odd. Well, I've known other women who've gotten divorced. They've been married twice, and they've like kept... The first... The one they got married off name. of, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I don't know does. what it is. Maybe it's like... It could just be like logistically easier to I go back know. to like the second you know, like original if you, name. If you were Leanne Williams and then you became Leanne Kreischer and then you became Leanne Smith and then you were like, I'll go back to Kreischer because I get all the documents I need are yeah. under Kreischer. Maybe. Or yeah. Maybe but I so. also, oof, I, yeah, like, yeah. It, it is, it is good. It's kind of a compliment to your father. We're, we're well, not. My dad's the best. Yeah. You met my dad? I, don't know uh, if you I think. He's been maybe to some in shows, passing, maybe, but like maybe. not. Yeah. He's great. you know what I did was because uh, of the uh, the painting debacle on the tour bus. I think it was a painting. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, and we don't have to get into that or that person, but yeah, that. So I did meet him in passing once. Like, yeah, really, yeah. About the painting that was not allowed on You're the bus. Fucking, what an asshole! I know. What a that is the truth. But. Yeah. But, oh, well. Yeah. Well, you'll meet him again sometime. I hope so. He's yeah. always around. Yeah. He's so you know, great. Does I, he come out here much? He usually comes out here three times a year. We are, he usually comes like October, right around Christmas, March, April. Yeah. But he's waiting to come in May for the movie premiere for The Machine. Uh, are you guys, are, are you guys doing it here or are you doing it's it in It's in like LA. A, yeah. Yeah. Um, so he's coming for that. And then his brother and sister are driving out here to meet him because um, when we redid the kitchen in this house, my dad and his sister were out here when we first bought this house. And my sister, my aunt said, well, I'm remodeling my kitchen. Why don't I just take all your old appliances? Because they're all kind of nice, high-end appliances. They're just maybe 20 years old. Yeah, yeah. And so good brand, good quality. Yeah, good yeah. brand, good quality. Just old, 15, 20 years old. So they're driving out here to get an entire kitchen full of appliances. They're throwing them in the back of a pickup and they're just... Uh, coming. yeah. Yeah. And I have a 17-foot canoe like, that, at my house that my dad wants. So they're getting a canoe. That is the most, like, southern shit ever to be like... We'll just come we get them. We will drive a thousand miles. A thousand? It's, or it's like 2,000 one it, way. To, <laughs> to, like, get a couple of free... Like, to not spend money on... Free, exactly. Yeah. It's like... So I was like, take what you want. So they've got, like, the microwave... The dishwasher, the stove, a toilet, a pedestal sink is all piled so, up in the corner of my garage. They're like, they're we, just going to come over and. Yep. And then my dad was like, well, I don't need this sink, but somebody might. I don't need this toilet, but somebody might. I love that. Though. I, I, I think love it too. I, I like that. That's like a very like, um, it'll be mine till someone else needs it is kind yeah. of a nice way to think about. Community. Yeah. Because we waste so much shit. We do. Yeah. Like, and I, I'm bad about it, but like, I'm like. It's like, you know, like you feel better, like it's easier to just throw old clothes away than like donate them yeah. to go through the trouble of donating them. But yeah. like, you know, it just feel it's a better way to be. You it know, is a like, better way we, to be. And yeah. I'm happy to, it makes me feel better that they're, that my Aunt Carol's taken all this and she'll use it and she'll appreciate it because I've just saved her a lot of money. 
that, you know, she doesn't have to buy appliances. There was nothing wrong with these appliances. Yeah. And they're really high end, very nice. So they're gonna really fly expensive. out. They're gonna fly out to the to come to the movie premiere and everything. Uh, no, just my dad's coming to the movie premiere, yeah. and Steve and Carol, my aunt and uncle, are driving out. Steve, or Carol is your dad's sister, and Steve is my dad's brother. And then, so, which ones are? Oh, they're si- they're all they're siblings. All siblings. Oh, okay, not, this there were is not, four of them. One passed. Yeah, so but they're not. Uh, they're not. They're not married. Th- yeah, that's what I'm sorry. That's no, what was, Carol's yeah. married and Steve's married, but they're, are they all in Georgia? Brother, sister, yeah. Yeah. So they're driving out, and they that's love to road great, trip. Man. Isn't it great? They're in their early to mid seventies. Carol's the youngest. The next one older than her was my aunt Diane, who passed away, and then my dad, and then my uncle Steve. And um, my uncle Steve used to. Uh, um, set up mobile homes. So he, he loves to drive. He loves to drive. I love it too. So my Aunt Carol will like make us ham sandwich and hand it to him while he drives. He pulls, he literally drove from Georgia to here and like, I think it was like 38 hours straight. He Ooh. just pulled over and took a nap for a couple hours and then kept going. I couldn't believe it. They've driven out here three or four times now and they just love the adventure of it. I get it, man. And it's like, I love I love it when it's quiet on the road. Like uh-huh. it's oh, it's and it bad. makes me feel so loved because they're driving it's, out here. It's really cool. And more than and they're coming, like three of them coming together or whatever is like it's an adventure for them. And I get all three of them here. Yeah. And my uncle Steve loves Lowry's the prime rib. So when he comes out, I take him and get him a good prime rib. Yeah, they steak, like, and he loves it. He, they really appreciate this kind of stuff. Out I here. think yeah. so. That's fucking cool. It's man. really cool. I'm trying to do more of that with my brother. Like, have oh, a yeah. like, yeah, we're not like great at that, but we're we're also young. So yeah. like, maybe, you know, like we can get to a place. I think. Well, that you're working on it is yeah. what matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you do feel, you have a sister? Or are you an no, only child? I'm an only child. In all these marriages, my dad has three step children now. Okay. But in all their marriages, but were you uh, only grown one. when or out of the house? Yeah. You didn't oh, grow yeah. like you didn't spend oh, a lot no, of time no, with no, your, they're a lot younger your step siblings. Yeah, yeah, no, they're a lot younger. Yeah. Uh yeah, a lot, lot younger than me. I don't know how her her oldest son is probably probably in his early forties and I'm fifty three. Okay. So So Yeah, he, like yeah, there's early. an age gap. You guys didn't spend time. Totally, the same no. Yeah, yeah. And the youngest his youngest is probably in her ooh, late twenties, maybe thirty years old. Okay, so they, she could be mine. Yeah, you know, yeah, she yeah. Could be my kid. Um, um, so no, I don't. Do you? Uh, was a re- was remarriage weird for you with your, when your father getting remarried, or did it make sense, or how no, old were you when it happened? Um, well, he's not actually married to who he's with now, uh, but they've been together for twenty. That's some. That's a marriage. they're married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like. When he married his second wife, her name's Jan, they started dating when I was about eight, but they didn't get married till I was about 19, 18, 19. So when they got married, I was really happy about it. I loved her. Yeah. I've, I still love her. My kids call her Grand Jan. She's part of our family. I mean, she raised me pretty much. Even though I live with my mom, I live with my dad all summer. Yeah, like, yeah, Memorial yeah. Day, Labor Day. So she was... She planned every birthday party. She, you know, got me ready for every prom. She was my mom. Yeah. In the way a mom is a mom. You like know? she knew how to nurture. Like, yeah, yeah, she she was yes, she was not a lovey dovey, huggy feely person. She was very frank and very to the point, and my mom was not. So I really loved that. I yeah, knew where I stood yeah, with her yeah. at all times. I had there was no mystery about what was going on with Jan. So I loved her. I still love her very much. But um but yeah, I don't, I didn't know she, she had kids when she divorced my dad and got remarried. That divorce was hard because my dad really broke down. Took a lot out of him. It was them. really bad. Uh, when they divorced, it was really bad. And I, when they divorced, I was 20. So your dad would have been like early He was 40? 42. Yeah. And he was a disaster. A well, I think like. For years. That age too, you know, like maybe like been married twice mm-hmm. and. One time young, and then one time years later, when you think you kind of have your shit together, yep. and it still doesn't go. It was, it was really hard. Yeah, it can be. I think it can be brutalizing. Yeah, yeah. 
And now and now he's with another lady. He's with Sue, and they've been together for over 20 years, and they seem really happy, and she's great. And she has three kids, and he they each kid has three kids, and so he's got nine. Grandkids on that. Pretty brand, much. I, guess, I mean, yeah. he's always been with them, so they're his grandkids. I mean, I think of them as, as his. Yeah. As much as mine are his. Yeah, yeah. You know, um... And he's and he loves them. I they're I mean they're just they're great. It's great. He's happy, and they're all happy, and they love and appreciate him. And I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm so grateful because I feel like. So he found this woman when he was in his like fifties, Sue. Yeah, guess so. Wow, that's cool. It is cool. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Is your dad still alive? No, he's been gone for a long time. How is that years? to have no parents? That would make me feel rudderless. I think. Um. There's a lot that goes with it. I bet. I think, you know, like, it's quite an adjustment to not, you feel a bit lost in points, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and my dad went before my mom, and I was much closer to my mom, but I was still, you know, heartbroken when my dad died because there was a lot of stuff to, like, fix and do there. But I guess what I have found, it it's bizarre. And, I like, I ha it, it causes me, like, a bit of anger in the sense of like, I'm like, oh, this person's 10 years older than me and both their parents are around. And you know, like, yeah. and they're like, and I'm like, what the, f you know, and it's like, it's, I, it just, and it's like, I'm not mad at anyone, yeah. but, uh, but the situation, you know, but yeah. it, it's hard not, you can be so happy for someone and still jealous of what they have. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I have like emotions like that. But I also, I went to therapy after both of my parents died, like for, like gave it a real good shot. I think the, like the thing I have like tried to learn and tell myself is, uh, you know, like you just got to be the man that your mother raised you to be and mm -hmm. like, you'll be fine. You know, like, so like I try to, I try to scout that, mm -hmm. but a lot of times it just feels like you weren't done being raised yet. You know, right. like, and that fucking sucks, man. Like mm -hmm. it, it sucks to not have like a, a guiding hand for you, even if you are a completely capable adult, which I am yeah. like, but you need somebody to like, even if you don't need them to take care of you, you, you need to be feel, feel like you're being taken care of, you know, like, mm -hmm. and a partner can do that in a, a, a child, like, like so many people can do that, you know, but like, sometimes you just want to rest your head on someone's lap and be like, I'm fucking exhausted. Yeah. yeah like, and uh, I don't really have a lot of that in right, my life. Right. So that's like the difficult part is like trying to go to someone and your friend, like I talked to Bert, I can talk to you. I can talk to a lot of people and tell them how like exhausted and scared I happen to be. Yeah. yeah. But like, and they can only make you yeah. feel okay. So okay to a degree. Uh, it's not the same. No. And then like, and I think like maybe the closest thing to that is a partner mm -hmm. or a, like, you know, a wife or a husband or a girlfriend or whatever. It is, but it's not the same. Yeah. It's, uh, like that, I, that I've never been married, so I don't right, know, right. you know. Yeah. But like your parents can soothe you in a way that mm -hmm. like most other people cannot, like if anyone can. Yeah. And so I have, that's what I miss. Yeah. Uh, but my, that, my grandparents, my dad's parents were like that for me. Yeah. They were my soft place Were they pretty, fall. like pretty steady? For you. Oh, hundred yeah. percent steady. I had steady to the point of like being so boring, but at the same, not boring at all. Like I knew what they were doing. Like right now, if today if my grandmother were alive, she'd be cooking dinner, and my pop would be about to walk into the house. He'd take his pocket protector out of his overall pocket, put it in the same spot, wash his hands, and sit down every day. Same time they were in like clockwork. Clockwork it, yeah. Like clockwork. They yeah. had a farm. Everything ran like clockwork, and. There was something about them. Hard workers, huh? Very hard workers. Yeah. Sun up, sun down. Yeah. Every my mom day. came from farm work. Like my, my grandfather was a farmer. So it's yeah. a different breed, Fucking, man. They still have the land that the farm was on. They yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Like her sisters, two of her sisters still live on it. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's real hard work. Yeah. But steady people, reliable. Yeah. Well, they don't have time. You can't fuck around with something like that. No. Yeah. Everything's up. You're on nature's clock, which is fucking way different than Google's or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Well, but, tell me how you feel about what we did today because we have to wrap up. I have to go. <laughs> yeah, we've been Tongue forever. And I got to go take Isla somewhere at some point. <laughs> sure. She's probably like, are you still alive? Um, um, I feel good, I think. Yeah, I feel good. You know, like it's very... Are you talking about the podcast or the or the edit? Uh, the edit. Oh, I feel... First of all, I feel good about the podcast. You <laughs> so do? Not, I thought that's what you were asking. But yeah. 
it's like an adult conversation. For uh, I think with the edit, I like I'm excited to see the next version of it. Yeah, you know, yeah. like I think like we were saying earlier, like I don't like cameras. I don't like like being on. Part of it's because I don't like to look at myself. Like I have like yeah. so that part of it was kind of difficult to watch myself the whole time. But it was much easier. It was to take myself in physically was much easier than I thought it was going to be. That's so, right. You look so the, great. Yeah, I think I look, you look uh, great. Yeah. So like, I think that part that was a part I was very scared about. And then like the jokes, I feel good about, and I feel like it's after today, this thing will really have taken a lot more shape. Mm -hmm. And like, so I feel like there's wind in the sail. Let's like now let's see how fast we can go, like yeah. kind of thing. But I I do feel good about it, and. uh Whew, I don't like the and then the next steps are the next steps. We watch it again and then offer more notes and then we take it around and see who wants what. See yeah. who wants, who wants it. Yeah. It's very exciting. It's Shane. hyper exciting. It's also uh, I'm a little like I feel like I'm blushing. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I I feel like I feel like I made something good, so I want people to see it. You made yeah. something really good. Yeah, yeah, it's the the well, like I should say, we've all made something good, which is it, well, I mean, the writing is mine, 20 but twenty like, percent of it is not you. But it's so collaborative when it comes like this. It shit is, but nobody was helping me get any of it out. Besides, like until I came to you guys, you know, like I had the act. Yeah, but like there wasn't anyone coming at me that I wanted to like this is the opportunity I want, you know, like, right, right. like, so when, you know, we all talked about it, it was like, yeah, this is, the, this is a good opportunity. Like, this is not me just giving something good and being like, well, it'll be on cable at midnight at 2 a.m. someday. No, no, you no, know, no, like, no. there's like, I feel like instead of just making it and putting it out, like I'm learning a different part of like how you position yourself to succeed with something you've made as opposed to just, it goes back to like the marketing stuff and like, like now, like, we're doing the other parts of this and that's really good and I'm excited about it. So, right. Yeah. Like I've, so I do feel good. I'm excited. To, good. Like it's not dumb, but I, yeah, I do. I feel, uh, you see how it's being crafted. Yeah. 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 From like somebody's it. like perspective, like, yeah. Having an editor that knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And like being able to be like, I don't like, I like this. I don't like this, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, and coincidentally he, David edited my half hour special with which Comedy is so crazy. Yeah. yeah. That guy must work a lot. He's amazing. It's fucking insane. He's amazing. He just knows. I mean, he did so much of the heavy lifting for us. Yeah, I would like, I would have, I don't think, if I had to watch both tapes and then like. Forget it. And then pick out like. Four angles for yeah, two shows. Yeah. And then, Forget and, it. and then pick out like. No. I like this part of Joe K, but not this part of Joe K. Can yeah. we put these parts together? Ugh. It's like picking up a needle with a tweezer and yeah. moving it from one side to the other like, it's like this. like personal binary kill code. Kill me it's like, yeah. and kill me. But this part, I thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, I, I had fun today, too. Yeah. I did, yeah. It's yeah. like someone... How do you feel about it? I feel amazing. I feel like... <coughs> I feel like when I went in, I... I I feel like I am really good at collaborating. I don't need to be the boss, but I, I'm really good at collaborating. That's a real skill set, man. I think it might be, and I don't think I really understood that so much about myself until recently. But I I'm, want I'm not you, great at it. You're not? No, I can be like a team player. But great like, in there? Yeah, but like that's because we were collaborating in a way like where I value your perspective and expertise and stuff. Like if you were like, trying to collaborate with me on my act in a major way, like in the oh, writing of it, I would be business. like, I, yeah. But like, you know, like when we went through notes for the special before we shot it, you were like this and this. And I was like, these are good notes. This is not uh, someone telling me not to do something or like, you're like, this is what I'm curious about. Like, yeah. Uh, but like, I like, I write I've never, I've been in a writer's room like twice. Mm -hmm. And one of them was on Burt's movie. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And that was very like pitch and putt kind of, but I didn't, hate that experience but I was like very much like this is bizarre man yeah yeah like so maybe I'm not maybe it's not that I'm not good at collaborating but I I have um limited I'm so experience. used to being a stand-up alone yeah, yeah you have yeah. limited experience yeah and like so and I'm so very used to being like this is a pretty solo affair like stand-up stand-up is but yeah. the, the special the thing that's fun to me about the special I think is not is being is uh, loving what you do and seeing how it can be loved by everybody and what 
what pieces of that puzzle make it that way. Does that make sense? Yes, 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 yeah. To make every every moment just be like delicious. Yeah. And that's juicy. like that's the, the difference. Yeah, the, the difference is like um yeah, <laughs> like a shaping it is like very different than like how it comes out of me and then like how I give it to you guys and then what we do with it collaboratively and then like like these are these edges are rounded off a little bit. It uh -huh. looks like a very different table now. Than, yeah, than it isn't it a cool experience? It, it's fucking sick. It's really cool. It's yeah. really cool, and it's hard. So, this is the first time you've been in an edit bay like this. Is that right? Or have you? Yeah, done this for any before? extended, I've been in one before, but never like no. for any extended period of time, and certainly not on any of my own shit that's come out. You know, like yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, on your no. own stuff, where you can see your own craft, and then no. you get to craft your craft. Yeah, right. Because crafting your craft for stage for live is very different than crafting it for television. It's bizarre. It's yeah. totally different, right? Yeah. It's such a great learning curve uh, for. I, I would imagine for you as an artist, it's been a learning curve for me to watch Bert on stage. And then the first time he asked me to come in and do edits with him, I was like, this is a completely different, almost a completely different genre, even though it's the same. It's yeah, stand-up comedy, but they're completely different. Because L what live and live and Live in a way, like live and at home or two, like same act. It's got to like, I'm seeing that it needs to come out in a different kind of, Right. It's it's a different capsule. You you take it in from your couch as opposed to from a theater seat. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And it informs how you perform, I think, some yeah. or you can allow it to work for both uh better the more you learn. That's you know very I mean? yeah. That's I wonder does Bert when he's like taping a special, I don't know if I've ever talked to him about this. Is he thinking about like how the hour feels live or is he thinking about how it's going to be edited, or is he think, taking on both end, do you think? I think in the beginning, he just thought about uh, how it was going to be live and a little bit how it's going to look taping. And as, I mean, on television. And as we've gone, he's done five specials now. And now he's thinking Same about it five? kind of simultaneously. What works for both? Yeah. So some of this big behavior. And that comes, that, does, is that again that comes back to the the like the more you do it, the better you'll yeah. get at it. Yeah. It's the learning. It's the sitting in the edit bay going, oh, this thing that I thought would be amazing doesn't translate yeah. on film. That's got to be a. Bummer. And this one thing that I didn't think anybody would catch up on is the one thing getting that a real really pop. stands out. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's really that's why when we were first doing this together, I would sit in the audience. And, and listen to the audience so that when I got in post, I remembered what the audience was reacting to. So when I watched what we see on camera, because you get focused on what you see on Bert, yeah. I would be like, but I remember the audience being like voluminous over here. Let's uh, look at that. Like, shift that in. Yeah, like pocket, like yeah. yeah, part A of like whatever joke from uh, show two. Yes. It's like. Man, they really bursted on that for yes. whatever reason. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I love the process. I'm so glad you came in today. It uh, was so much fun to do with you. It's my pleasure. I Didn't loved think. it. I did too. Thank you for allowing me oh, because please. Bert, when Bert said, he, Bert said, <coughs> we want to produce Shane's special, but I need you to do for Shane what you do for me. Will you do it? And I went, are you kidding me? I would love it. That's, see, that's like also the thing is like, it's kind of the same, a lot of the same personnel and stuff that you guys used. Uh-huh. <clears throat> so it's like, oh, this is how it's done. This isn't like, yeah. this is how you guys have made a bunch of good specials. Yeah. yeah. So now I know like, oh, this is like, if I like, when I do this again, mm -hmm. I can figure out like, this is the way I would, like, yeah. this is what I have learned and this is how it'll look more like how I would do it or like, not like, or like, oh, I'll put my own little twist on something, you yeah. know, like. It's it's cool to see that I'm getting it like the way you guys have been doing it, yeah. and not uh, uh, just been like, well, yeah, you we'll figure it out. Like, yeah, like this guy can do it for this or whatever. Like, it makes yes. me pretty happy. It's a proven crew. Yes, it is. For That's sure. the best way to put it. Like, this is a proven crew. We're a proven crew. And uh, yes, we are. Yeah. And they were all so happy to be on this crew. So cool. Every person was joyous yeah. and 
gracious and lovely and so happy to be yeah, there. I was I was thrilled with the team spirit of it. You should be. And I think you feel all that positive energy when you watch special. It just is really great. <coughs> I do feel like it comes off in a good spot so far. It does. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for thank kind you. of doing thank my you podcast. Me the peacock thank you. I know, time. right? <laughs> yeah. <Hey>, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank man. you, James. All right.